Hey, how's it going race fans? We are back here with the Method Race Wheels score qualifying for the King Shocks 37th annual San Felipe 250. You can see this is the practice lap right now. What we have going on is we have our trophy truck class and our trophy truck legends class. We had our spec trucks qualify earlier. Now all of the trophy trucks are going out. Everybody gets to go on one site lap. They get to pre-run and that's exactly what you're seeing right now. So we have about 20 trucks still to go that are gonna go out on their site lap. We're thinking it's gonna be about 1 p.m. So about 50 minutes from now till the actual timed laps start. So don't worry, you're not missing any Thing. We are going to leave these cameras on and we will show you guys some of their practice lap footage and then we will come back and start narrating for you guys again once the time lapse are going to start. So uh, we'll come back in about 50 minutes or so, about around 1 p.m. for the time lapse. But until then, you guys can hang out, get a drink, have some lunch, and you can watch uh, practice laps. One of the reasons it's been delayed a little bit was uh, Dan McMillan had a little too much fun on his practice lap and ended up on his lid. So uh, unfortunately for Dan in the 23, they uh, rolled the car over. They did get it back over. It looked like they were both okay. And uh, hopefully they're able to continue on and do their time lap in a bit. So we'll see if the 23 is able to make it back around. Didn't look like too much damage was done to it mostly some cosmetic body damage but that caused a little bit of a delay here so that's the delay that we're looking at now so we'll uh, we'll see you guys in a little bit that there you go that was uh, that was them earlier on their side until they got it back over so unfortunate for uh, for dan just came out of that s turn a little bit we didn't get to see it live so i'm not sure exactly what happened but it's it's uh Looks like it's right after an S turn there. So maybe got a little sideways and just ended up putting it on the, on the roof. But they got it back over, they're all good and we're continuing on the site lap. So come back in a little bit, or just hang out and watch this and we'll see you guys in a little bit. Go further, explore the trails less traveled, and reach your destination quicker with King's new Toyota Sequoia 2.5 OEM Performance Series Kit. These 100% bolt-on kits feature front ride height adjustment, superior ride quality, and external finned reservoirs with optional wide range compression adjusters to further refine your ride quality. See why we're the choice of experienced overlanders and order your Sequoia kit today. We've been doing a lot of driving off-road. It's a bit of an adrenaline rush, but in such a slow-paced environment, it's effectively really safe and a lot of fun. It's really important that everyone that comes out here has the respect to have a lot of fun, but not do damage. We always try and leave it cleaner than we found it. The best way to leave your mark on the world is to hardly leave one at all. BF Goodrich, what are you building for? the ultimate adventure tool, with all the storage to hold even more adventure tools. The all new Adventure Ready Bronco Sport. I got that right turn, we're good. Uh, meet up at the compound group up. I turn four. Yeah, for sure, dog. Good, little driver, straight on through.
finishing touches of any off-road vehicle are the things you add to make it your own. That's why we've developed a full collection of over 70 Polaris engineered accessories specifically designed for Pro-R. Polaris, think outside. Welcome to Ensenada. For those who are looking to expand their culinary horizons, a place where the adventures of the sky, valleys, and oceans come together. Ensenada, the capital of Mexican wine. Go further, explore the trails less traveled, and reach your destination quicker with King's new Mercedes Sprinter 2.5 OEM Performance Series Kit. These 100% bolt-on kits feature front ride height adjustment, superior ride quality, and external finned reservoirs with wide range compression adjusters to further refine your ride quality. See why we're the choice of experienced overlanders and order your Sprinter kit today. We've been doing a lot of driving off-road. It's a bit of an adrenaline rush, but in such a slow-paced environment, it's effectively really safe and a lot of fun. It's really important that everyone that comes out here has the respect to have a lot of fun, but not do damage. We always try and leave it cleaner than we found it. The best way to leave your mark on the world is to hardly leave one at all. BF Goodrich, what are you building for? The ultimate adventure tool with all the storage to hold even more adventure tools. The all new adventure ready Bronco Sport. I got that right turn, we're good. So uh, meet up at the compound group up. I turn four. Yeah, return dog. Good little driver, straight on through.
finishing touches of any off-road vehicle are the things you add to make it your own. That's why we've developed a full collection of over 70 Polaris engineered accessories specifically designed for Pro-R. Polaris, think outside. Welcome to Ensenada. For those who are looking to expand their culinary horizons, a place where the adventures of the sky, valleys, and oceans come together. Ensenada, the capital of Mexican wine. Go further, explore the trails less traveled, and reach your destination quicker with King's new Toyota Sequoia 2.5 OEM Performance Series Kit. These 100% bolt-on kits feature front ride height adjustment, superior ride quality, and external finned reservoirs with optional wide-range compression adjusters to further refine your ride quality. See why we're the choice of experienced overlanders and order your Sequoia kit today. We've been doing a lot of driving off-road. It's a bit of an adrenaline rush, but in such a slow-paced environment, it's effectively really safe and a lot of fun. It's really important that everyone that comes out here has the respect to have a lot of fun, but not do damage. We always try and leave it cleaner than we found it. The best way to leave your mark on the world is to hardly leave one at all. BF Goodrich, what are you building for? The ultimate adventure tool, with all the storage to hold even more adventure tools. The all-new, adventure-ready Bronco Sport. further, explore the trails less traveled, and reach your destination quicker with King's new Mercedes Sprinter 2.5 OEM Performance Series Kit. These 100% bolt-on kits feature front ride height adjustment, superior ride quality, and external finned reservoirs with wide-range compression adjusters to further refine your ride quality. See why we're the choice of experienced overlanders and order your Sprinter kit today. We've been doing a lot of driving off-road. 
It's a bit of an adrenaline rush, but in such a slow-paced environment, it's effectively really safe and a lot of fun. It's really important that everyone that comes out here has the respect to have a lot of fun, but not do damage. We always try and leave it cleaner than we found it. The best way to leave your mark on the world is to hardly leave one at all. BF Goodrich, what are you building for? The finishing touches of any off-road vehicle are the things you add to make it your own. That's why we've developed a full collection of over 70 Polaris engineered accessories specifically designed for Pro-R. Polaris, think outside. I got that right turn, we're good. Uh, meet up at the compound group up. That's 10 4. Yeah, for sure, dog. Good little driver, straight on through. further, explore the trails less traveled, and reach your destination quicker with King's new Toyota Sequoia 2.5 OEM Performance Series Kit. These 100% bolt-on kits feature front ride height adjustment, superior ride quality, and external finned reservoirs with optional wide-range compression adjusters to further refine your ride quality. See why we're the choice of experienced overlanders and order your Sequoia kit today. We've been doing a lot of driving off-road. It's a bit of an adrenaline rush, but in such a slow-paced environment, it's effectively really safe and a lot of fun. It's really important that everyone that comes out here has the respect to have a lot of fun, but not do damage. We always try and leave it cleaner than we found it. The best way to leave your mark on the world is to hardly leave one at all. BF Goodrich, what are you building for? the ultimate adventure tool with all the storage to hold even more adventure tools. The all-new Adventure Ready Bronco Sport.
Go further. Explore the trails less traveled and reach your destination quicker with King's new Mercedes Sprinter 2.5 OEM Performance Series Kit. These 100% bolt-on kits feature front ride height adjustment, superior ride quality, and external finned reservoirs with wide range compression adjusters to further refine your ride quality. See why we're the choice of experienced overlanders and order your Sprinter kit today. We've been doing a lot of driving off-road. It's a bit of an adrenaline rush, but in such a slow-paced environment, it's effectively really safe and a lot of fun. It's really important that everyone that comes out here has the respect to have a lot of fun, but not do damage. We always try and leave it cleaner than we found it. The best way to leave your mark on the world is to hardly leave one at all. BF Goodrich, what are you building for? The finishing touches of any off-road vehicle are the things you add to make it your own. That's why we've developed a full collection of over 70 Polaris engineered accessories specifically designed for Pro-R. Polaris. Think outside. You ain't seen nothing yet. Yeah, I got that right turn. We're good. Uh, meet up at the compound group up. At 10-4. Good job, return, dog. Good little driver, straight on through. further, explore the trails less traveled, and reach your destination quicker with King's new Toyota Sequoia 2.5 OEM Performance Series Kit. These 100% bolt-on kits feature front ride height adjustment, superior ride quality, and external finned reservoirs with optional wide-range compression adjusters to further refine your ride quality. See why we're the choice of experienced overlanders and order your Sequoia kit today. We've been doing a lot of driving off-road. It's a bit of an adrenaline rush, but in such a slow-paced environment, it's effectively really safe and a lot of fun. It's really important that everyone that comes out here has the respect to have a lot of fun, but not do damage. We always try and leave it cleaner than we found it. The best way to leave your mark on the world is to hardly leave one at all. BF Goodrich, what are you building for? the ultimate adventure tool with all the storage to hold even more adventure tools. The all-new Adventure Ready Bronco Sport.
Go further. Explore the trails less traveled and reach your destination quicker with King's new Mercedes Sprinter 2.5 OEM Performance Series Kit. These 100% bolt-on kits feature front ride height adjustment, superior ride quality, and external finned reservoirs with wide range compression adjusters to further refine your ride quality. See why we're the choice of experienced overlanders and order your Sprinter kit today. We've been doing a lot of driving off-road. It's a bit of an adrenaline rush, but in such a slow-paced environment, it's effectively really safe and a lot of fun. It's really important that everyone that comes out here has the respect to have a lot of fun, but not do damage. We always try and leave it cleaner than we found it. The best way to leave your mark on the world is to hardly leave one at all. BF Goodrich, what are you building for? The finishing touches of any off-road vehicle are the things you add to make it your own. That's why we've developed a full collection of over 70 Polaris engineered accessories specifically designed for Pro-R. Polaris. Think outside. You ain't seen nothing yet. I got that right turn. We're good. Uh, meet up at the compound group up. I turn four. Yeah, for sure, dog. Good little driver, straight on through. Welcome to Ensenada. For those who are looking to expand their culinary horizons, a place where the adventures of the sky, valleys, and oceans come together. Ensenada, the capital of Mexican wine.
All right, welcome back everybody. We are here once again for the Method Race Wheels score qualifying for the King Shocks 37th annual San Felipe 250. This is Austin Fish Farner and I am joined today by Nick Eisenhower. Hello. How's it going, Nick? Having fun so far? So much fun. Tons of fun watching trucks, hanging out. Yeah. Just get to sit next to you and talk about it. It's great. It's no a good, good day. The, the weather's nice in here, right? And the shop <laughs> is nice. It's, it's yeah. a little little windy outside now. That's Just good. Just right? We see some flags moving. Mm -hmm. That's going to make for uh, no dust out there. Good. Not going to have yep. to worry about that. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we did have a little slight delay earlier. I think we actually have a social clip of it. Um, Dan McMillan had a little bit of an issue on his practice lap which you can see right there. It'll probably play that again. But uh, came into a corner, kind of, the, the truck just kind of bounced weird, mm -hmm. right? It took yeah. like a weird bounce. Yeah, it kind of looks like it was unsettled just right and kind of unloaded and picked up on that right front and over it went. Yeah, just kind of went over. Probably didn't hurt the truck too much. And we're gonna play it one more time. It looks like it just had some body damage. I know the roof was missing, but that was the practice lap. That's the yeah. good news, right? Mm -hmm. So as long yeah. as they can get the truck back over to the start, he can still run it and get his time lap. That's yeah. just gonna be maybe a body panel or two less exactly and with the team like the mcmillan's i got that thing all figured out and sorted out there's no way they're not going to make a qualifying run i'm sure i would be yeah. utterly surprised if that thing didn't go for qualifying i, I agree it really just so. looks like the you know the roof came off and mm -hmm. that's about it really hopefully it's, it's hard to tell from here but most likely we will we will see dan out there in a little bit on his qualifying lap maybe without the hood yep. uh that's one way to remove the hood mm -hmm. probably not going to go back on too easily after yeah. that <laughs> but hey you know get it out of the way right now you know don't do it during your yeah. actual qualifying run it's like a new helmet you got to drop it so exactly Exactly. Got those new sponsors, new wrap, new everything, nice and pretty and painted up. So, yeah, just drop it in the dirt a little bit and get it ready to go. Yeah, but yeah, exactly. Hopefully that's out of the way and on for a nice, clean rest of the 2024 season for Dan. Yeah, um, not, not, the, not the best way to start, but it was on the <laughs> practice lap. And like we said, lots of, you know, they have time to go back. He's kind of starting, uh, let's see, where does he start? He's starting not too far to the front. Well, he's about 10th or so, it looks mm -hmm. like, on the list. Uh, yeah. So today we're going to have 32 on our entry list. There could have been a late late entry we didn't get told about here. Yep. But we're going to have 32 of these trophy trucks going. And then following them, we're going to have six trophy truck legends. Yep. Now, what's, people that aren't familiar with it, what is the difference between trophy truck and trophy truck legend? Age. Age. Yeah, That's it, right? just being 50. 50, just the driver. <laughs> so just the driver of the truck in Trophy Truck Legends has to be 50. Mm -hmm. Co-driver could be however uh, old they want. This is a look at your qualifier course right here. This mm -hmm. is a five-mile course. It's the same course that they qualified the Trophy Truck specs on earlier, if you were watching. Yep. And this course, it's got a little bit of everything on it, really. Yeah, what did you think about what we saw so far? Yeah, it's starting to get pretty technical. It's getting really you know, burned in really well from the spec trucks running through. So there's lots of two tracks and lots of grooves. Uh, the sand and the silt is kind of playing a number on a lot of the trucks. You can see them kind of bogging down. And then some of these corners, if you look there, like to the uh, to the right of the screen, there's a tight right there and the tight left, the tight left again. Those sections are kind of catching drivers by chance. We saw a couple guys go over in the spec truck qualifier. Yeah. We saw somebody go over and keep going. So we Hancock did. pulled that off. So that was nice and smooth. But uh, yeah, you know, it's going to be exciting. Obviously, the unlimited trucks are moving at a much higher rate of speed, uh, much higher chance of, you know, incident. Uh, but yes. hopefully everybody here has a nice, clean, smooth run. And here's a look at your top 10. Now, this order is just the qualifying order, and then you're going to go off of their times for, to, uh, for on Saturday. So Adam Householder in the 24 is going to be first. Second, we have Tim Herps. In third, we have Christopher Polvardi. Fourth, Mike Walser. Fifth, Sam Baldy. Sixth, the class champion, Bryce Menzies with the new number one plate. Dave Taylor is going to be next, followed by Mikey Lawrence, Dan McMillan, who we saw earlier. Hopefully he can get it fixed and start ninth, and then Luke McMillan there. Now, if Dan can't get it fixed by then, you can start later, too. Yep. You don't have to go at your qualifying spot. You just have to go before everybody's done qualifying. Absolutely. And here's, here's something cool we're going to see. This is live in the, in the Herps uh, car right here in the number 19. So a big thanks to Starstream, Starlink, Brian Moore, and everybody that works on these things. This is pretty awesome. We get to see live in-car mm -hmm in these cars how awesome is that it's absolutely cool like this is just i think what this sports needed for a very long time is to actually just show the people at home and show everybody interested in this how insane this sport really is and really just kind of drive in how much fun this sport can be so I think it's definitely taking everything to the next level, and it's, 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 it's just a great thing all the way around. Yeah, it's definitely cool. I mean, that's, we're looking at HD footage here in the yeah. middle of nowhere mm -hmm. that will work at 150 miles an hour nowadays. Absolutely. It's, it's freaking cool. It's it really cool. is. It's awesome. I, I like, this is my favorite view out of all the in-cars because you can see the driver, you can see the input they're doing on the steering wheel, and you can see the GPS, and you can see the speed. Yep. So for those of you that aren't too familiar with the GPS, over there on the right side, the little yellow screen, that number in the top left-hand corner, that is the mile per hour that they're going so when you see that number reach over 100 miles an hour you know they're definitely mm -hmm. uh hauling the mail That's now it. how fast do you think these trucks can do 150 i know at least yes. right yeah the herbs trucks so it's 
especially yeah. the Gibbs engines and geared upright, yeah, they're they're high 140s, and I've seen a few of them touch 150. I think today is, on the qualifying course, we may see, what, 80 maybe, maybe for 80, a second or two, but there's yeah. not a lot of wide open on this course, so I don't yeah. think we're going to see 100 mile an hour anywhere on this course no, today. No, there's just a few sections, and I'll pull my screen up here, but there's just a few spots where you have like a nice long run straight, but the rest of it's down in the washes and twisting and turning through all the bushes and all that stuff, so kind of yeah. makes things a little bit more technical. All right, well, we did this earlier, and I didn't get too many complaints, so we're going to have to do this again. we gotta, we got to pick some people here. Okay, let's pick some Let, people. Let's look at the entry list, and we got about another minute maybe until this starts. This is going to be Adam Householder in a minute. Yep. But look real quick at the entry list. Who do you think is going to be your top two if you had to pick two right now? Well, I think you and I are going to fight over this, but I think uh, an easy number one choice would be a Toby Price. Yes, okay. As a top qualifier would For be a Toby qualifying. Price. And then I'm going to put something on Kevin Thompson if Lentner is driving. Perfect. And there we go. That is our first one off the line. Adam Householder right there in the number 24. This is his timed run. Once again, they did a practice lap earlier. Now he's headed out on his timed run. And I think this is going to be, if we had to pick a two-wheel drive time, this will probably be one of the fastest two-wheel drive times today between him and Cameron. Absolutely. I would put Adam Householder in the top five out of everybody, in my opinion. He's going to be go. quick. He's going to be fast. Adam's been on fire lately. He's done great at his recent races earlier on this year. Um, he's just kind of on a roll. That whole team is locked in and dialed in. They've got the trucks figured out. And, uh, you know, it's just kind of hard to beat them right now. So I'm kind of hoping that I yep. see some cool things down here in San Felipe. Yeah, this is going to be a lot of fun to watch these guys today. And like you said, you know, to Toby Price, I, I think he's qualified first, if I'm not mistaken, almost every race, <laughs> if not every race that he's qualified yeah. at. So that's that's pretty impressive. And the last time he qualified first, it was like eight seconds or something. Yeah, a substantial and, amount. And he did a donut because he <laughs> missed a turn, and he still beat everybody by eight seconds. Utterly impressive, so, honestly. So this is inside the 19, so we're going to ride along with Tim Herps. This is uh, Jason Montez riding with him over there. Jason Montez actually rode in a spec truck, one of the Herps spec trucks earlier today, so he knows exactly what the course looks like. That's actually really smart, right, mm -hmm. to have your co-driver go for a ride in a spec truck earlier so they get extra laps out on the course. Absolutely, yeah. It's just definitely, if you have the opportunity, opportunity to do something like that, it gives you a huge advantage because that guy is so for much more familiar with what you're about to go do than the guy maybe behind you who didn't get that same opportunity. Yeah, definitely. So they're going to start three minutes apart today, just like they did earlier. So one truck every three minutes. And we have about 30, what do we got? 38 trucks going total mm -hmm. today between the trophy trucks and the trophy truck legends. Yep. And they will mix their start time. So if a trophy truck legend out qualifies any of the trophy trucks, that's where they will start tomorrow. The, yeah. Those are the only two classes that they mix. All the spec trucks will still start behind both of the trophy trucks and the trophy truck legends. They will not be mixed in with them. So. Number 19, looking at one minute. You can just see he held up a one there. That is one minute until the 19 is off the line. We'll see if we get a shot of uh, Adam anywhere on his run going too. We're gonna have a couple different drones up throughout the course today for you guys. We're gonna have, we have their start camera and we're gonna have a couple in cars. I know that the Herps and I think somebody else might have an in car too. Might just be the Herps, but we'll end up seeing. We'll see what happens. How nervous you think they are right now on the start line? Uh, you know, a legend like Tim Herbst, I don't think he's got much nerves left. I think he's been doing this for so <laughs> long. He just kind of clicks in, goes to work, does his job, and jumps back out and goes back to pre-running. Yeah. And then, I mean, Montez as well. You know, he spends so much time in the right seat of race cars. Like, it's got to just be another day in the office for guys like these. I'm sure you get excited and it's fun and all that good stuff, but I would assume that some of those, like, initial nerves have just kind of got to be muted a little bit by how much you do it. Yeah. All right, 10 seconds. We're going to do a ride-along. We're going to put the sound on for you guys. And this is what it's going to sound like in about five seconds when they leave the line to be in a trophy truck.
So that's what it's like to be inside of a trophy truck it qualifying down here in San Felipe. Pretty cool, huh? Absolutely. That's just real exciting stuff, honestly. It's cool to see, like, obviously, you and I have been in multiple trucks and spec trucks and desert trucks, 1400 yeah. trucks, all that stuff. And it's cool to just kind of see, like, how quick these big Gibbs motors actually get these things up and moving. Oh, yeah. I mean, I could sit there and watch that all day. Like, it doesn't get boring, mm -hmm. really. No, <laughs> it's pretty, pretty awesome. So cool to see. That was the number 19, Tim Herbst. Next on the line is going to be the 94 of Christopher Polvardi. Now, this is is his first race with his new truck at a score race. He did race it earlier this year at King of the Hammers, mm -hmm. but this is his first race in score with his new truck. And that is going to be, uh, it looks, it does, that doesn't look like him, does it? No. Fly with caution. But it could, it's got to be though. He's going to be up next. It's supposed to be. I don't think I've seen the truck yet, so I'm not sure Maybe what the color it way looks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he should be next off the line in the 94. And he also has a live in car. I don't know if we have the link to that. But he does have a system, the same as the Oh, yeah, yeah, there we go, it, it is. Yeah, that's yep. the black and the gray, yep. So this is Provardi taking off. That's a Mason all-wheel drive truck. Uh, had great, great success in the Mason two-wheel drive in spec class. And uh, it's just oh. kind of a natural fit for him. He did some driving for Walser last season in the all-wheel drive truck and probably got his feet wet a little bit in it. Yeah. And uh, he's just, you know, one of those naturals. He's got it figured out. He's quick in the car. and excited to see great things come from this team. Yeah, he's had great success, like you said, in the trophy truck spec class. He was very fast, and so far it's carried over in this truck in the limited races that he's done in it so far. But like I said, he raced with Mike Walser at Baja 1000 last year. Very, very fast, mm -hmm. uh, very fast team. It'll be interesting to see how he does this year. Tim Herbs here still making a run for it. I don't know if Adam finished yet. I didn't see a shot of him finish yet, but that doesn't mean that he didn't. I would assume so. We're six minutes in. Yeah. So. Yeah, some of the times from earlier were real low six minutes, like 619, possibly somewhere around there. So mm -hmm. these are going to be a little bit faster. Obviously, these are all-wheel drive. They have twice the horsepower mm -hmm. that the trucks earlier did. The suspension isn't too much different. Actually, some of them might even have a few less inches of travel Potentially, with yeah. the all-wheel drive compared to some of the two-wheel drives. But uh, definitely higher horsepower. And on this course today, it's definitely going to make a big difference having those front two corner those uh front two wheels spinning mm -hmm. out of a corner that's absolutely <laughs> yeah you know if you're just joining us we'll get some more shots of the whole overlay of the course and you'll see what we're talking about uh, after you leave the start here it makes a nice tight right and then it just starts bobbing and weaving through a whole bunch of bushes and trees a couple couple good little straightaways but other than that it's a lot of back and forth where like an all-wheel drive vehicle will excel you can see here Pulvardi coming around the corner and just getting on the gas and taking off honestly twice as fast as any of the spec trucks we've seen today most of the time the spec guys are getting bobbled up there and then just digging all the way through that section so to see these all-wheel drives just get up and boogie it's very very exciting to see all right adam householder did finish got an update for you guys he finished on a right rear flat so, ah. so adam had a right rear flat i did get a time for him though his time was six minutes 29 seconds 0.491 so six 29 491 for Adam Householder, and that is with a right rear flat. So definitely the 629, that is slower than some of the cars earlier, but yeah. we don't know how long he had that flat for. That's definitely going to affect his run. Look at the amount of people that are out there now. Holy smokes. Yeah, so I think uh, the map and directions to this place Ooh. got leaked. Uh, not, like on, not on Fishistics, but it got leaked on, on a local site down there, yeah. and everybody found out where this was going to be at. And there was supposed to be no spectating, but obviously, this is Baja. Yeah. There's never no spectating in Baja. They do what they want to do. Yeah. So that is the 94 there, Christopher Pulvardi coming around. Tim Herp should be finishing his run, and as soon as we get a time for him, I will let you guys know. Hopefully we have times for everybody coming in uh, today. I know we didn't earlier, but we're working on it, and we should be good for the trophy truck class, I'm hoping. So cross your fingers. Next off the line here, we got the 89 and Mike Walser out of Comfort, Texas, in an all-wheel drive Mason truck. We were just speaking earlier about how Pulvardi did some driving there with Walser and helped them get some pretty solid finishes. So uh, I know uh, uh, Ray Griffith does some driving with Walser, so I'm kind of curious as to who's qualifying now probably Walser. Walser's been pretty quick yeah Getting faster and faster every race so yeah exciting to see him work his way up into the past yeah Mike Walser is actually the guy I'm really pulling for this year I you know I don't know how long he's going to stay around in racing he's had a few little um, you know health issues you see on the front of the truck he has a cancer mm -hmm. uh, symbol on there so I'm, I'm really pulling for Mike to have a really clean race and actually you know get on the box and try to win yeah. one of these one of these races probably this year is his year if he's going to win a race so I think so too I, I mean, I'm hoping he's got a good run they podiumed at the 500 I believe it was earlier on like second or third with yes. with a good team going and they did well at the thousand so 
it's just kind of, you know, you got to get all your ducks in a row and everything's got to land just perfect. You can throw all the cards up and everything's got to land just right to get a good solid finish at these races. Definitely. And I think they just need a little bit of luck on their side because yeah. they, they have the equipment. Obviously, they got the driving talent. Mike is definitely fast now. Uh, and yeah, he just needs a little bit of luck and a clean run to have a good, uh, have a good shot at that top spot. Yeah, absolutely. It's there. It's right there within reach. You just got to, like I said, you just got to have all your ducks in a row and it's got to work. So that is probably Baja Brian there riding with him. He's usually his uh, navigator, Brian Hansen there. We'll see, that should be a pretty fast run for them. Hopefully we got a time coming in for Tim Herps any second. And that is yeah. Mike in there, we, we confirmed that. Yeah, and if you guys were tuned in earlier this morning watching the spec trucks go, you'll see like, you'll see a noticeable speed difference here between the two vehicles. As much as we talk about how the chassis are very similar and suspension configurations are very similar, just the engine package and drivetrain makes a huge difference in these things. And then these, obviously, these two vehicles we're looking at right now are the Mason all-wheel drive trucks, and having that front, front end dig and pull just makes a world of difference as well. Yeah, so these are some pretty cool shots. We got a couple different drones out on course today for you guys. We got a start finish line camera and we have a couple in-car cameras. Hopefully we got another in-car camera. We had the Herps one going earlier. They're most likely finished with their run by now. Let's look at Mike Walser. You see he's got the big Texas logo on the side there. I bet you can't guess what state he's from, right? Texas? That's probably a pretty good guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that truck's looking good. Yeah. Next on the line, we got the 82 of Sam Baldy out of Beaumont, California. Uh, something I really enjoy about this truck is that they built this truck in-house. Uh, they designed it in-house. I know Lalo Laguna had a lot of help with that as well, being an yep. engineer. Um, it's very cool to see them out running the truck and doing what they do. It's very rare to have a house-built truck. Yeah, one-off brand. Yeah, Fish and I were talking about that on our lunch break here about how it's like nowadays everything kind of is the same-ish. You know, you pick a yeah. couple, there's a couple different chassis out there running and everybody has those, but it's very oh. unique to see something different. That so. was a pretty good save right there. You can see he yeah. stayed on the gas when uh -huh. he got sideways right there. Yeah. And he was able to kick out and come back around. That was more sideways than you want to be. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that was not comfortable for the co-driver. <laughs> yeah. He may have puckered a mm -hmm. portion of his body on that one. Yeah. Sam Baldy in a two wheel drive vehicle, so. He's going to have to get out there and really put his foot down if he wants to try and put a time up there comparable to the four-wheel drive trucks. Definitely. That's, and that's the thing. You know, it's not that the four-wheel drive trucks are always so much faster. Yes, they, they are quite a bit faster out of the corners. The problem is you have to drive the two-wheel drive truck 110% mm -hmm. to try and keep up with an all-wheel drive that's driving at 80%. Yeah. So that's the biggest difference is you have to drive on the edge 100% of the time in a two-wheel drive just to try to keep up with the all-wheel drives. Exactly. Yeah, you got to push so hard because just the exit speed that these trucks are getting with all four tires spinning is like incredible just how quick they exit out of these corners and then pull around and pull around and pull around and how much less braking they got to do dragging around the corners just makes a world of difference when it comes to your overall time on a qualifying run next year on the line we got the number one red backed plate of bryce menzies last year's trophy truck points champion um, same thing in a mason all-wheel drive truck always a contender always running up front um, it's going to be you know tough to you know have him not land himself in one of these top five spots especially qualifying he's always been you know not i don't want to say conservative but you know you expect to see him in the top three he's not like a uh, toby price where you're like all right that's first place or he's having an issue but yes. you know you'll see menzies up there in the top three for sure oh yeah definitely yeah there, there's a few people that you know are going to be <laughs> very very fast every mm -hmm. every race that's mike walser right there i think that was the uh was that the gaunt corner he just cleared right there i believe so yeah yeah, if you guys weren't tuned in earlier, the Gaunt truck took a little tumble in that truck in that corner, so we've since called it the Gaunt corner. Look at that speed he's carrying right ah, there, right? <laughs> that's what we we're talking about. In the two-wheel drive truck, you really got to push, and you just got to yeah. dig and dig and dig, and you got to carry as much momentum as you can to try and keep a pace of these all-wheel drive cars. All right, so we're waiting for some more times to come in, and then I'll get them to you guys. Hopefully they come in soon.
So we have, yeah, Sam Baldi, Bryce Menzies, and then Dave Taylor are gonna be your next cars headed out on course. See, that looks like Bryce at the start there. So Bryce changed up the, uh, the, the scheme on the truck. It's a little bit of yellow mixed in there now, right? Still the Red Bull, obviously Red Bull main sponsor, but a little bit different. Uh, it looks cool, I like it. It's a little bit uh, loud, which is nice, because trophy trucks are loud. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I'd read somewhere on this post that it's like the topographic view of one of the highest peaks down there in Baja, and it was like an actual layout of all that. Oh, wow, that was that was a little bit of a bike. Yeah, that turn's gonna catch somebody for sure. These these turns are definitely getting uh, yeah, They're definitely getting, getting chewed up and getting deep. We got some berms on there. The problem isn't really the berm on the outside; it's the berm on the inside when you clip it, like what we saw the uh, Alexander truck do earlier. Exactly. Man, I think it just takes off. These trucks are so fast. Yeah, the, the exit speed out of corners is just amazing <laughs> on the all-wheel drive. You know, the, the overall speed is not any faster. The top speed is actually slower a lot of times on these trucks. Yep. It's just the speed out of the corner, which is where, what you're doing most of the time. It's yep. not a drag race. Ball no. is not a drag race. How often are you really going over 130 miles an hour? Very what, few ten, times. Maybe 10% of your race exactly. at the most, at least, if yeah. even. But your speed from 30 to 60 is yeah. probably 50% of the race, and that's just mm -hmm. so much faster. Yep. You know, and, I, and I'll say it, I've said it once and I'll keep saying it, like off-road racing is a game of averages. You know, you want to make sure you have a vehicle that's competitive in the bumps, in the corners, in the straightaways, on the lake beds. And you want something that plays each of those parts of the racetrack evenly. You don't need something that's very like heavy footed in one because you're just going to lag somewhere else. And these race courses are just so much variety that you need to be quick everywhere. Yeah, you there. can see, look at him come out of the corner on the gas, like how much faster that thing just gets going mm -hmm. compared to a two-wheel drive where it's just spinning the tires. Mm -hmm. This is actually a really fun course to watch, right? Yeah. Like the drivers might not like this course too much, but I think maybe they will. But for us spectating, this is actually a really good yeah. spectating course. Yeah, for us sitting in the studio watching this from the, from the drones and from the cameras on the ground, like I can only imagine how much fun it is. Even just sitting out there and spectating some corners would probably be a great time. Definitely, and there's a, a lot of spectators out there, like <laughs> yeah. we said. Hopefully everybody just stays, you know, outside of the corners is never where you want to spectate. So I get a little uh, sad when I see people on outside of corners. Hopefully everybody knows better eventually. If you want to go out and spectate, go on the inside of the corner. You get mm -hmm. the same view, but it's way less dangerous. Yeah, and stay far back. And stay far back. Yeah. There's no reason to be two feet from the course. Bryce Menzies coming around with the red number one on there. Good looking truck right there, right? It's easy to spot, right? Uh-huh. You will always know whose truck that is. Yes. And it's not saying that these all-wheel drive guys aren't pushing super hard as well. You gotta think there's not just one or two of these guys out running all-wheel drive trucks. I think we counted there's like over 10 all-wheel drive trucks running right now. Oh, at least. And so they're out racing against those guys as well. So they gotta push these trucks just as hard Definitely. to try and stay out front of the other guys that are in you know, comparable vehicles. All right, that is Dave Taylor in the 26 off the line right there. And I do have a couple more times for you guys. So the 19, Tim Herbst is in with a 642. So 642 for the 19. The 94, Christopher Polvardi is in with a 554. Wow. So new, new low time, Christopher Polvardi out of three, not surprised, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, 554 is your new low time to the 94 of Christopher Polvardi. Now these are all unofficial times. Later today, Score will post the official times once they do a review. Make sure nobody got any penalties, took any big shortcuts, anything like that. So take all the times we're reading today with a grain of salt. It may change later, but that's what we got for you guys right now. So 5.54, the time to beat by Christopher Polvardi. Up next here in Sagin, we got the number 85 of Mikey Lawrence uh, in a Herps truck there, a Lawrence Equipment sponsor. This is a two-wheel drive truck, similar to the Tim Herps truck, the number 19, who uh, just went previous. Um, fast truck, fast family, tons of racing under their belt, and they're always at, they're at every race, so it's good to see them out there still running. Yeah, they race at this one and the Legends, mm -hmm. both, the whole family out there racing yep. two trucks, pretty cool. Some more Bryce footage, making that corner nice and straight. He's going fast, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Holy smokes. So it's right here is where we saw earlier, we saw the, the Alexander truck take a little tumble and keep moving. And right there is where Dan McMillan 
had his tumble, uh -huh. I believe. That yep. was the corner right there he just came out of, if I'm not mistaken. Little S turn there. This, this is going to be a fast run right here, obviously. Bryce always very fast. I mean, Br Bryce, between Bryce and Luke McMillan, they've won every race in what the last like 10 years they've been racing or something yep. just about. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, last year they did. It was Bryce or Luke every single race. Uh -huh. <laughs> they just alternated. What an exciting time in racing, honestly. It's cool to see these guys kind of out there dominating and, you know, they've got it figured out. They've got the whole situation, the, yeah, the fitting the stuff, the, the prepping, the racing, the driving, everything. It's yeah. just the best. They got the media, they got the helicopter, they got Justin doing their videos here. If you guys haven't watched Bryce Menzies' pre run videos that uh, Justin does, they're, they're awesome. They do a full series. Go over to Bryce Menzies' YouTube and check it out. It's, it's really cool to watch. Honestly, like, I get kind of bored of watching race videos because yep. I've seen them so much, but I watch all of yeah. theirs just because theirs are actually interesting. Yeah, absolutely. It gives a whole new perspective and it kind of opens your eyes to like what goes into doing this stuff. You know, if you're sitting Definitely. there, something you've never done, Baja racing of any sorts, and you kind of watch that, it gives you like, that's what the pros do. So it gives you something to aspire to. Like, yeah, behind the scenes stuff is the most fun because everybody sees this stuff. You go out and watch the race, you see a truck come by, like, okay, cool. But yeah. what did it actually take to get these trucks there? Yeah, the Let's two, see the three prep, the free run. Yeah. What are they doing this day? What do they do here? And they're, they're, they don't always give perfect. They have issues. Yeah. It's cool when they show issues, you know? But no one has a perfect race and free run all the time. That's Mikey Lawrence there in the 85. Lord Knight Industries truck. Lawrence Equipment, they actually make tortilla equipment, which I always think is very random. Everyone always thinks Lawrence Equipment is like a heavy machinery equipment thing or something. It's actually tortilla equipment I didn't know that. that they make. Yeah, so there you go. Dang, that's pretty cool. <laughs> so if you want tortillas, I do. probably made with a Lawrence Equipment tortilla maker or something like that. Dude, I feel so bad. I bought my wife a tortilla press from like Home Goods or something like that. It was busted. Dude, oh, thing's not good. You better talk to Mike. <laughs> yeah, Maybe I'm gonna hit him get up. you a, a real one. Hey, Lauren's family, please. I need a little tortilla press for my house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's Dave Taylor right there in the 26. These guys are out there in the. Uh, um, having fun they, they've been racing quite a bit in the last couple of years once yeah. again that's a john hoffman prep truck get a little sideways there the adonia yachts is one of their companies make some nice yachts i guess i mean i, I don't wouldn't think, is there know. A bad yacht? i don't think so <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if you even... have yacht in your company name yeah. you probably make some nice stuff <laughs> yeah you probably build cool <laughs> things oh man all right, there's a look at San Felipe, one of the most fun places to race, how epic it is. Look at how many lines there is, washes down here. That's what makes it so cool. It's not a single track, follow the leader course. Obviously today is on the qualifying course, but during the race, all those lines right there would be open pretty much. You could go whichever line you want there. You just gotta hit the VCPs, but today there, there is no VCPs, there's just one course. It's 85 like, 85? Yeah, Mike yeah. Lawrence. Oh, there, look at, we got some in-car. Is that in-car? No, oh, that's a good drone like pilot. In -car. <laughs> it almost looked like in-car for a second, but I was like, wait, that's a little slow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, once again, big shout out to all of our drone operators out there. These guys all do a great job standing out there in the middle of the desert all day to bring you guys these shots. All the drone and the helicopter guys. I saw the Herps helicopter earlier with B-more in it. I know Justin's up there in the Menzies one. Lots of, lots of fun and cool, cool shots coming in. Next on the line, we got the 23 of Dan McMillan, we're hoping. Let's uh, see, if it's got a couple body panels missing, <laughs> yeah. that would mean it's Dan, right? Yeah, we saw his little mishap on the, uh, the site lap there, on the parade lap, and uh, we're hoping he got that thing all, you know, torn down and put back together and ready to go out there and run. I'm sure he did. Yeah, I mean, the McMillans have some of the best chase guys and best chase crew out there. They would yeah. be able to have that thing fixed in no time, as long as there wasn't some catastrophic failure sure. with the truck. Yeah, something that's maybe not noticeable by yeah. us here at the cameras, but so... I mean, what do you think Dan's going to do now? You think he's going to push extra hard? Think I think he's, he's going to just be conservative timid, at this point. Yeah, yeah, probably. Yep, there we go. There's the 23 of Dan taking off. Missing the hood. No hood. <laughs> I don't know. He might be faster. Oh, he's got no body at all. Nothing. Oh, yeah. The oh, whole be, body's man. gone. That's all one right. hot rod now. Look at that thing go. So is it actually faster or slower without the body? I think it's actually slower. Oh, a qualifier know. like this, I don't think arrows is important. Now probably just, not because you don't have the high speed, right? Yeah, you're just down on weight. Yeah. Is that a 23 on the oh, side? Oh yeah, there? I hope that that's painter's tape. Did that is that what that is or is that I the, hope. is that the uh, headers? It looked like a no, 23, right? No, no, it's right? 23. It is, yeah. All right, we got the epic numbers going on on Dan McMillan's truck here with a white white duct tape. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. 23 on the side. 
Dude, you can see that that number better like that than you can most of these yeah, other cars. Exactly. <laughs> All right, everybody, let's take a note from Dan here. This is what yeah. our numbers need to look like. So when Nick <laughs> and Fish are here talking about racing, we know who you are. Yeah. The 85 perfect. here on Lawrence's truck's great too. Big, that, that's big a good one. On the you can see that. Yeah. Take note, guys. Yeah. Now you want to get talked about? Make sure your number's visible so we can make sure we know who you are. Yep. All right, I got some more times coming in for you guys to so get your pen and paper out. Mike Walser is in with a 6.07. Oh, so wow. that is a new second fastest time. And then Sam Baldy is in with a 6.41 in the 82. And then Bryce Menzies is in with a 5.57. Oh, wow. So 5.57, that means that unofficially Christopher Polvardi is still ahead of Bryce Menzies yep. by three tenths of a second. It's impressive. So very impressive run for Christopher Polvardi. Now that is unofficial. We will have to wait till later, but that's what we're being told right now was their time. So very, very close. Right now it's Christopher Polvardi in first, Bryce Menzies in second, Mike Walser in third, Adam Householder in fourth, Sam Baldy in fifth, and Tim Herps in sixth. That is the six trucks that have gone so far and finished. Next in line, we got the 83 of Luke McMillan out of El Cajon, California, and another Mason all-wheel drive truck, similar to his brother Dan here. Uh, pretty much identical trucks, matching everything. Um, like we were talking earlier, it was either Luke or Bryce last year at every race. So It was. They won yeah. every race last year. So it's going to be a it's very exciting battle this year. Like, And, you know, we talk about race to race. It's just going to be exciting to see how this entire season unfolds, everything from qualifying to racing. We've got four, what, a qualifier before every race. So we've got a whole season of racing and a whole season of qualifying, and it's just going to be great action for all of us to kind of look at, pay attention to, and just be excited to look at results. Yeah, I think it was a great move that Jose G did by bringing back qualifying to every race because if, if you have a bad race, well, why should you be punished for, on your next on race the next start? One. You know, yeah. it just it kind of didn't really make too much sense that they would go by that. They, the point was they want to get everybody to race every race. Yeah. That, that's the point, obviously. Perfect. There, 23 there we go. Number. Look at that 23 <laughs> on the side. Perfect numbers there on it. Dan McMillan's machine. Oh boy, Dan. <laughs> Maybe it was a plan the whole time. Let's see where Dan qualifies. Maybe he lands himself up there up front. There's the 83 of Luke McMillan yeah. off the line. There we go, that's gonna be a fast one. Now, just for you guys' note for tomorrow, if you see it on Saturday, the one way to tell they're two trucks apart, because they're really close, right? From right here, it's hard to tell if that's a Monster M or a Beast logo on the right. side. Dan McMillan's truck has A-pillar lights. Oh, So you if go. you see A-pillar lights on the truck, it's Dan McMillan. Oh. If there's no A-pillar lights, it's Luke McMillan. So that's the way you can tell the difference between the 23 and the 83. So Luke will definitely have a good run going here if he keeps it clean. So next on the line, we're going to have Tabo Vidosla. Here's another one coming that could very well set the fastest time today. Tabo is one of the craziest drivers that we have in this field, <laughs> <laughs> or at least he used to be. Used he, to be I yeah. think he calmed down a little bit the last couple years, you know, last few years, but Tabo is insane. Oh, yeah. He, he just drives like there's no tomorrow. I'll always remember the clip of him on the lake bed clip of him yes. hitting that pucker bush at like yes. mid 100s. And, and just and flying, flying in the air sideways, <laughs> just like, yeah, and never let off. No. When he landed, just kept going. Didn't skip a beat. No, didn't skip a beat. Between him and Alan and Pudia, they're probably two of the craziest drivers. Uh -huh. If we had to do a crazy driver scale, I would put those two guys at the top. Remember Steven Eugenio? How wild he used to be? Yeah, but that was, was back in the day. Yeah, that's true. Okay, current. Okay. Current. current. Currently current, crazy yeah. drivers yep. that actually have skill yeah. is Tavo and Alan. Mm -hmm. I agree. Top two crazy drivers. Have to agree. Now, I'm pretty sure if you put either of us in the passenger seat with any of these guys in the all-wheel drive trucks, we're going to call them all crazy. That would not be in the passenger seat <laughs> with any of these guys. That's way too much pressure. I've got, I've got, a, list of, I got a list of people I won't ride with because they look too scary. And yeah. <laughs> I know who I won't ride with. That's a look at Dan McMillan right there. That's the easiest car we'll be able to tell for the rest of today who it is. Because he's got Giant 23 on the door? Yeah, and he's got nothing on it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor Dan. We're rooting for you, Dan. Dan's not the only one that crashed on a qualifying lap or on a practice lap before. I do That's remember true. a certain person named Cameron Steele <laughs> who wadded it up one time on a practice lap. Yeah. So Dan's not the only one. He doesn't have that title. No. So don't feel too bad, Dan. Cameron did it before as well. 
as far as we know, it might have been a ploy. Cut weight. To get the body yeah, off, get right? get the body off. Better yeah. visibility, less weight. Yeah. Who knows? Maybe it'll work out for him. Bold strategy. That is definitely a bold strategy. <laughs> There's a look at Luke McMillan. He'll definitely be one of the top five qualifiers today. Luke's not always the fastest in qualifying. No. And it doesn't matter because he wins the race, right? Absolutely. We don't have to be the fastest in qualifying. We have to be good in the race when it counts. You don't want to be slow in qualifying, which Luke is never slow. No. But he's never, I don't remember the last time Luke qualified Whoa. first. And perfect example, prime example here of Todd being absolutely wild. Just wild, yeah. nuts. Just absolutely nuts. He drives the thing like a two wheel drive, but the front ones are spinning too. Yes. Very, very skilled driver, been around a long time, raced pro trucks back in the day. Uh, that was a lot of fun. I actually raced against him in a pro truck back in the day, and I was beating him one time. That's my claim to fame. There it is. I was ahead of Tava Vidosla in a Baja 1000 one time. And Fish's friends have heard this story a thousand yes. times. I will say it again <laughs> next time we see Tava racing. I <laughs> oh, got a little wind picking up here. Yeah, there's definitely quite a bit of wind down there. I saw one of the other arches blew over a second ago. I think the King Arch blew over. Who do we have here on the line? Uh, the number 10 of Alan and Pudia. Oh, so we got the two crazy guys back to back. Back to back. Perfect. We got a whole stack of Mason trucks going off. Uh, Alan and Pudia in a, uh, out of Ensenada with the Mason all wheel drive truck. Uh, I've always liked the way his truck looks with the, recently with the black with the pink striping and everything that kind of cuts yeah. the body lines and stuff. I think the truck just stands out. Great Does. design, great layout, grabs your attention. It's you know, becoming somewhat of like an iconic look. So there's three minutes apart at the start. Start gap, one car every three minutes, one truck every three minutes, I should say. And it is a rolling start. If you guys weren't watching earlier, the timing does not start until the flags. Oh, 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 oh. Tabo just blew that corner. Yep. Oh, Kept it on man. all fours, but it's gonna he hurt did. the time overall. You know what corner that was, right? Yeah, I do. Well, what corner was it's it? The gaunt corner. The gaunt corner, see? Yeah. But see, Tabo didn't try to save it. No. He just went straight, right? He accepted his fate. Th that was smart. Yeah. That's why Tabo is crazy, but he's not stupid. Yeah, he yeah. didn't try to turn it at the last second and Fair. roll it. He's like, oh shoot, I blew the corner, go straight, stop, then yep. turn. That's exactly textbook how you blow a corner <laughs> without wadding it up. Right, right, right. See if Tabo can settle down a little bit in there. That's a hard thing, man. You're out there qualifying. You've got five miles to go as fast as you can, or, or faster than everybody else that you think you're going to go against. Which yes. Is as fast as you can. Yep. Um, now, look, look at this. We're seeing some dust that was actually in front touch, of them for yeah. a second there, huh? Yeah, it looks like with the wind picking up, it's going to start changing direction. So it's going to move that dust across the course onto the next side of the course, which. Yeah, because right there is the other side. Yeah, maybe it was his own dust. It, could, it probably was, because that oh, was the yeah. not corner right there, I think. Uh huh. So here's the number 10, Alan Pudia, getting ready to take off the line. Clean new paint job there for the Tavo truck. It reminds me a lot of Jurgensen's racer paint body. Yeah, it almost looks exactly like it. <laughs> yeah. I remember Jurgensen had all the white panels and stuff. There's the number 10, Alan and Pudia taking off the line. Yeah, that'll be a very fast time too. Hopefully we have some more times coming in in a minute. We should have Dave Taylor, Mikey Lawrence, and Dan McMillan's time coming in pretty soon. They should all be just about finished. That is not the 97 right there, that is the 10. 10 of Alan Impudia. The Impudia family is one of those families that just races a bunch of different classes. You got Rodrigo out there, he mixes it up in the, in his Can-Am, in the mm -hmm. UTV class. Yep. You got Aaron that'll jump in either one of the UTVs or the, the trophy trucks sometimes. Yep. And their dad, Rodrigo, has been around forever, yep. involved at Rodrigo Senior. Mm -hmm. Super nice family. Those guys are awesome. Oh yeah. Papa's and beer, always a good place to go hang out, have some fun. It's always fun to watch those guys in short course too. Because they're, they're nuts. Wild. Yeah, they're yeah. wild. <laughs> yeah, they're wild, they're nuts. <laughs> And it's carried over into Alan's trophy truck driving. <laughs> right, right. Well, that's just cool, man. It's, it's, it's impressive what this equipment will hold up to these days because before you had to kind of preserve the equipment a little bit, but nowadays these things are so strong and just they'll take a beating for 250 to 1,000 miles. You just jam on them, jam on them, jam on them. Yeah. And usually they hold together unless you have some fluke issue or some fluke failure. Well, we were talking about that during the break earlier. You know, you used to be able to go out 
and you could have a transmission problem go out and you could make a transmission change and mm -hmm. you still had a shot to win the race. Yeah, not anymore. Nowadays, you can barely get a flat tire yeah. and have a shot to win the race. If you get a couple, you're, you're probably not winning the race. Yes. I mean, it's just the dynamic of racing has totally changed in the last 10 years. It's insane how hard you have to push the whole time now in order to win one of yep. these things. You got to be on your game from start to finish. There's no more sightseeing. There's no more, hey, I'm going to take it easy the first 100 miles and turn it up. Nope, you're just jamming from the start all the way to the finish. Yeah. Solid drone shot here, the number 10 of Allen and Pudia. Beautiful Mason all the drive truck. As soon as I get some more times for you guys, I will read them off. Updated. If you're just tuning in, so far the low time is Christopher Polvardi unofficially with a 554. And in second, unofficially, is Bryce Menzies with a 557. And then in third was Mike Walser with a 607. And we got some more times coming in for you guys right now, so hang on one second. Yeah, these next couple bunches of times, I think we're going to be not shocked, but just impressed at how close everybody should be stacked up when you get Dan, Luke, Tavo, and Allen all put together. And then the one I'm really excited for is a couple, couple trucks down the line is the number 34 of Brock Dickerson in that brand-new Alumacraft trophy truck. Big motor, big power, a guy that really knows how to wheel a car, and I'm kind of excited to see how that all plays out. Up next on the line, we got the 97 of Gabriel Torres, um, also in a Mason all-wheel drive truck, brand new truck, full loose on body put on that thing, something a little different. All right, here's some more times for you guys. The 26, Dave Taylor, we have a 624. The Mikey Lawrence, number 85, we have a 630. Dan McMillan in the number 23, we have a 622. And then Luke McMillan in the 83, we have a 554. Hey! But I need to get I need to get the hundreds yeah. because Christopher Pulvardi is also a 554. 554. Oh boy. So I need to we need to get that clarified on the hundreds of thousands of seconds. Who is faster, Christopher Pulvardi or Luke McMillan? This is just incredible. Like, off-road racing has turned into road racing. Like, remember when we started race off racing off-road? Like, you never thought of even tenths of seconds. Yes. It was like, oh, we're a couple seconds apart. That's how everybody yes. was. Nowadays, like I'm saying, we're going to get a stack of five or six guys that are all going to be within the same tenth. We, we could be within a thousandth of a second we could. here. We, yeah. we need to get those times to find out exactly who's in first. <laughs> so either Luke McMillan or Christopher Pulvardi is currently in first. Unofficially. Unofficially, of course. Everything Fish and I say is unofficial. Always unofficial. We're the most unofficial dudes in the world. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Next on the line is that number 34 truck of Brock Dickerson. Uh, brand new Lumacraft truck. I'm sure you guys have all seen on social. I think down in Plaster City running the big holes. Uh, it is a two-wheel drive truck, but I wouldn't be surprised to see him put that thing way up there on the list of qualifiers. That guy's wild. Whoa, speaking, speaking of, of wild, wild number, Alan Ampudia number coming here. right in on your camera view there. <laughs> yeah. One of the wild drivers out there. <laughs> really letting it hang out. Yeah. Hey, this it's is the beginning awesome. of the year. We got a full day to fix something. If we break it, like, let's let her eat. That's what I think. Yeah. Next, yeah, I think this is where we're at. We're at Thursday. We don't race till Saturday. You got all day tomorrow to fix the thing. All right, we got the hundreds of seconds. Who's your guess? Who do you think's faster, Provardi or, or uh, Luke? Which one? Uh, I'm going to go with the veteran, Luke McMillan. Oh, you're right. Yeah. All right, so Luke McMillan, his fast time, complete time is 554.279. Yeah. Christopher Provardi is 554.279. Nine nine eight. All right. So seven Luke. tenths of it's just about six. Yeah, seven seven tenths of a second faster right now for Luke McMillan. Seven tenths. Seven is tenths what is taking the, is the difference between first and second place in this qualifier. That's snapping right your fingers. That it's faster than that. <gasps> yeah, seven tenths of a second. Uh, that so is cool. uh, that is insane right now. And we still have a lot of fast guys oh, yeah. to go. Yeah, got Kevin Thompson. We got Toby Price still. We got Lofton Daniel. Cameron Steele, you yeah, never know. We, we got Patrick some... Cameron Steele might pull something out. Yeah. Rob Where... Mack is something we got to talk about. We'll talk about that later on because that's a contender. Yes. Where is Toby at on here? Uh, he's the 17th truck off the line. So we've got Dickerson, Thompson, Steele, and Toby. Speaking of Dickerson, there's the 34. Uh, the bright orange truck going to be real hard to mix. miss. Yeah, it's always nice when people use bright colors like that, too, because you can definitely see that coming. That's a good-looking truck. That's what was always cool about Pistol Pete. You knew that yellow truck was coming. <laughs> you knew who it was. That's it. <laughs> That's a little drop right here. They come down, a little kick up, hard left. Yeah, 
It's a really, really fun course out here. It's just over five miles. So with these times, they're probably averaging, was that about maybe 60, or not quite 60, about 55 miles an hour maybe yeah. or so. All right, so Brock Dickerson, and then what did you, you say? This is Kevin Thompson. Kevin next? Thompson, yep, in the number seventy. So Kevin Thompson has had some bad luck recently. Yep. That's the only way I can describe these guys' races. These guys put in a ton of effort. Yep. The whole Concrete Motorsports team. They got Harley Lettner on board. They got Dave Narabeth down there doing safety for him from the MSS team, and they're doing everything right that they can. They just have some bad luck. They got Brent. Uh, in there that rides with them. They got a great co-driver. They have everything they need. They yep. just need to have some luck to get one yeah. of these things put together. I mean, the car literally caught on fire yep. when they were going to qualify at the last race they were going to do. Mm -hmm. Like the power steering yep. reservoir blew up. How yep. random is that? Yep. It's just they need some good luck to put one of these things together. Yeah. So I'm hoping they have a good run today. Somebody get some sage down there. You need to bless this thing. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> you need to do something to the truck to have some, change their luck up there. Yeah. Great shot here, the 97 of Gabriel Torres coming through with that cool Nissan bodied all wheel drive truck. I believe this is a brand new, brand new truck, recently delivered. Nothing like taking a brand new car and just dragging it through the dirt. <laughs> yeah, that's the best way to do it, right? Let's see what happens. Just go straight at it. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. There's a ton of spectators out here now. <laughs> this is wild. Closed course, huh? Oh, there's Dickerson back on the gas, jamming through the wash here. All right, so the next group of times that we're going to have coming in is going to be Tavo, Vidosla, Allen, and Pudia. They're, they're going to be some fast times they right there. Some things up so for sure. I don't know if either one of them can beat a 554 that Luke McMillan and Christopher Pulvardi both did. Uh -huh. But if they, if they did, I wouldn't be surprised. Right. If anyone's going to do it, those are two of the guys on this list that could do it. Once again, the two-wheel drive trucks, obviously, they just push a little bit more through the corner, kind of stay to the outside. There we go. There's Kevin Thompson right there, the number 70. I wonder if Kevin's driving or Harley's driving for qualifying. Potentially That's Kevin. That's a good question. I forgot to ask them. I, I would think it's Kevin. Harley does sometimes, though, but Kevin's gotten really fast. They're yeah. both so tall that it's not like you can tell by <laughs> looking in the truck, right? Yeah. Both of their helmets are literally in the roof. Yep. <laughs> Big Two of the tallest dudes in racing, for sure. Kevin Thompson is the tallest person in off-road racing. I think so. Oh, 100% he is. I think so. They had to modify the truck just for him to be able to fit in it. He's so tall. Yeah, Kevin Thompson is a monster. I remember 1450 days, because Kevin Thompson raced 1452. He's we raced like a little bit of everything, Everything, right? yeah, class yeah. one cars, all that stuff. And I remember before I knew who he was, we were racing against him, and him and I were battling back and forth. And he ended up edging me out, like, right at the end of Battle of Prim Race, getting across the finish line right ahead of me. And uh, I pulled into his pit, like, not confrontational, but just to congratulate him. Like, that was some cool racing. Like, we were battling door to door and all that stuff. And I remember pulling into his pit, getting out of my truck, walking up to talk to him and seeing this giant big guy. And I was like, <laughs> yeah. all right, man, good racing. And turned right back around because <laughs> yeah. I thought he was going to be afraid of me because we, you know, we put bumpers on each other. So, you yeah, know, I didn't know if he was going to be upset or not. And I expect him just to be a normal dude. Yeah. <laughs> and then come to find out later on, we spent tons of time together. And he's one of the nicest guys in the world. Like, oh, for such sure. Such a genuinely good dude. I've never heard anything bad about no, him. Yeah. Great but guy. like you said, if, no one's going to go up to him if they no. have a problem during the race. Uh, good, good luck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I remember walking up all fired. I'm like, oh, I got to talk to this guy. <laughs> yeah, all right. Good race, dude. Yeah. Yeah. I took oh, off. I'm going oh, back to my it. pit. <laughs> <laughs> that is Kevin driving. We just got confirmation cool. of that. So thanks, Nate, and uh, everybody that texted me that. Mm -hmm. So There's Kevin Thompson in the 70. Dickerson right there letting it hang out in the 34 Alumacraft truck. Got a nice pretty fox wrap on that thing. Or paint. I guess these guys got paint, huh? These trophy truck drivers, they I paint know. their trucks. I know. them still do. I feel like tons of them are just wrapped nowadays, yeah. though. Huh? I, I like the paint. I'm a paint guy, yeah. you know. It's, it takes a lot longer. It's a little harder to do and everything. Sure. But the paint just looks nice. That's true. The paint just looks so nice. I just got to try and get my wife to start painting cars again. Then I'd be in good shape. Paige yeah. used to paint all my race cars. Then we wanted to have kids, so no more painting. Now we're wrapping things. Oh, man. Yeah. I'm, like, I'm pretty sure we're done having kids. Let's start painting cars again. Come on. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, that's one of the fun things about off-road too is everybody shows up with a different uh, you know scheme on their truck mm -hmm. to mix it up, it makes it makes it look cool. Oof, that was an aggressive shooting some rocks out there. Yeah, Kevin's on it here. Yeah, on the pipe. You got the Starlink on the roof. Almost every single car has a Starlink now, it seems like. There's there's no reason not to. I mean no. it's seven hundred bucks for one of those things. Why would you not put right. one on your car? Right, right, right. I mean it's a little more if you get it modified and everything, obviously, mm -hmm. but still. Yeah, by the time you get it all mounted up yeah. and wired in and all you that stuff. Star mount on it or uh -huh. whatever you're gonna do with Star Stream. You got yeah. live video. I mean the crew guys are literally sitting in the pit with their Starlink watching the race, the car. race car Starlink yep. inside. So they don't they know what's going on before they even radio on the radio. Exactly. You know, they know exactly what's mm -hmm. going on the whole time. There's a look at Cameron Steele in the number 16. He just got his rolling start that he was asking for. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations, <laughs> he was the biggest proponent Cameron. of that. <laughs> yeah. He talked Jose's G into doing a rolling start. So we'll see if it matters. If Cameron doesn't have a good time today, we're going to have to give him a little crap yeah. because they gave him what he wanted. So he's got to have a good run now. Had his Cody Stewart in there with him, one of his, his longtime navigator. Cody is also big uh, help with the BFG tires and the mapping and everything that comes out for the race. Let's say a dusty look back at our start line here. Maybe we can go back to the drone cameras, yeah. get some more footage of Cameron and the other guys on course. Yeah. Next on the line should be the 46 of Toby Price, Mason all-wheel drive truck, Paul Wheel and the quad lock sponsored rig. Speaking of bad luck, yeah, these guys even, let's not even talk about it. Let's have just, had bad luck. Let's not even bring up any sort of Well, maybe of if we talk about it, then it'll change it up. It's like crossing you know? both your fingers. It cancels yeah. it out or something. Yeah. Well, it's like if you tell somebody that they're about to win or they're about to do something good, that's how you jinx that's them. That's true. If you talk about how they've had bad luck before, true. you okay. really can't go back from uh -huh. that because they already had bad luck, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking maybe that'll make them have good luck. Let's hope so. That's what let's those guys so. need, man. They're putting the effort in. Looks yeah, I mean, like they, they literally guys. started the Baja 1000. They got a flat tire and the jack got down, they forgot to bring it all the way up, started the, the truck, moved it, and I just had a massive problem right off the start, the yep. Baja 1000. Mm -hmm. It's like, man, what a complete Mile bummer. marker like 40. Yeah, like just miserable. right away. Just took him out of the race right away. There's Kevin Thompson right there in the number 70, Mason all-wheel drive truck. Oof. Whoa, that's going the wrong direction. Holy uh -oh. smokes. Whoa. <laughs> Aggressive. <Okay. All> right. <laughs> Nosing it into the crowd there on that one. <laughs> yeah. This is why if you guys are watching this, you always want to stay back from the course. It's, it's, it's fun to be close, but it's too dangerous. Stay back from the course, back up a little bit. You'll get the same view, I promise. Kevin battling a little bit of dust here, but hopefully he's got good notes and a good navigator in there telling him where to go. Forty six here, Toby Price. Let's see what him and Paul Wheel can do this year. All right, we got some more times coming in for you guys. The number twenty one, Tavo Vidosola, five fifty six. All right. So that puts him right in front of Bryce Menzies and into third place for a second until we get to the ten of Alan Ampudia, who has come in with a five forty nine. Whoa. Five forty nine for Alan Ampudia. That is five seconds faster than Luke McMillan and Christopher Polvardi. Is that right? Well, yeah, he's nuts. <laughs> what are we talking about? <laughs> Both Tavo and Alan Ampudia, I would never be surprised yeah, yeah, okay. at their time. Right, fair and enough. same with this guy right here. This is to look at Toby Price right here, forty six. You could put money on if he has a clean run, he's gonna be up there in the five yep. forties. Put money on it, as much money as you want, if he has a clean run. So anyways, back to the times. Alan Ampudia, five forty nine. Gabriel Torres, 6.07. Those are the times that I got for you guys right. there. I'm so new low, Allen and Pudia, new leader. But that may only be holding up for a minute or two here if Toby Price has a good run. Yeah. He literally qualified first in every race that he qualified for last year, which was the only two that they had. Right. <laughs> but he qualified first of all. So can he do it again? I wonder Maybe if we should this... do a picture, or picture here. That yeah. would be cool. I wonder if this wind here is causing an issue with the drones potentially being up there in the air. Possibly. What do we got here? There's Toby Price. The 46 quad lock Mason all the drive truck. Solid line choice Fly there, making caution. everything straight like we've been talking about earlier. Yeah, good looking truck right there. That is Andy McMillan's old 
truck. Mm -hmm. All had came out, they had a fire, lost their first truck that they had. Andy actually happened to be getting out at the same time that Paul had that happen. So it kind of worked out okay for Paul. He was able to go and buy Andy's truck because it was a two year wait if he was gonna get a new truck from Mason. So it was good timing for Paul. Uh, it wasn't cheap, but he had to go out and he yeah. bought Andy McMillan's truck. <laughs> Nothing like two Mason trucks in one year. Yeah, that's, that's that a million dollars a pop. That's uh, yeah. that's it's a bit of money to be spending. I'm no math wizard, but that's a lot of money. That's a lot. <laughs> we'll see. That's one of the big drops right there. You definitely don't want to fly off that drop, no. or you'll just nose it in really hard. Next there on the line is a 58 uh, Tracy Graf. So cool story about Tracy. This is an older racer engineering truck that they just finished converting to all wheel drive. Oh yeah. Uh, utilizing some racer parts, some Fortin parts. Uh, Justin Bean Smith did it all in shop with him and his guys. Uh, an extremely impressive undertaking doing something like that. That's just an insane amount of work on top of Justin racing himself and Graf racing. They've been running the spec trucks here and there and pre-running and all that. So. My hat's off to Bean and his crew of guys for getting that thing knocked out. And here at the start line, uh, I'm pretty sure they like picked the truck up yesterday on the way down. Yeah, he told me they literally so. dynoed it. They dynoed it like yesterday. They were yeah. going to drive it this morning for the first time in the dirt. So hopefully this is them sitting on the start line. It looks yeah. like it is. Yeah, it seems but to be so. Yeah, they, they have what, maybe an hour or two testing that thing this morning. So we'll see how it goes. The only other person I know of that converted a two-wheel drive to an all-wheel drive was Robbie Gordon yep. when he converted his truck a couple years back. Uh, he took his truck and made it all-wheel drive. And there you go, that is Tracy Graff right there. So new all-wheel drive in-house conversion by Justin Bean Smith. And uh, we'll see how they do today. Yeah. I mean, Tracy's always the conservative guy. He's there mid-pack, runs good and smooth. He's at yep. the finish line of every race. So hopefully he can do the same thing. And maybe this, maybe having the front wheels turn will give him that competitive edge to kind of break him, break him into the top five up there. Well, it should help. I would think so. I think that white Chevy moved out of the dust a little bit from earlier today. <laughs> yeah, they got tired of sitting there choking on dust. Uh huh. Oh boy. Just making some speed. Yeah, this is going to be a fast time. Looks a little bit more tamed and controlled than. He, he does, right? Yeah. Maybe he slowed down just a little bit today. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, you, you don't have to win qualifying by eight seconds. No, but it's cool when you do. It is. <laughs> you can talk some smack, that's for sure. Yeah. But then when you go out and you don't have a good race, true, it doesn't really do you any good. True. One fast dude, I'll tell you what. Next year on the line, we got the number 80 of Josh Daniel. Um, pretty sure this is the geyser truck, the all-wheel drive truck as well, right? Oh, actually, Josh, I just saw he is not going to oh. race today. So Josh went out. They just had the truck delivered to them yesterday. He had a hard crash at the um, uh, race at yeah. the snore race. They had a really hard crash. They wadded the truck up. The truck went back to Geyser. It was one of the Jesse Jones old all-wheel drive Geyser trucks. Mm -hmm. Is where Josh got it from, or that's who it was originally built for. Yep. Geyser fixed it. They brought it down to the race here for him, but the, it just wasn't working good. The, Josh it. said the shocks were just off. They tried to mess with it yesterday. Mm -hmm. They just didn't have the time to make the shocks what they needed to be for the race. And he wasn't comfortable sure. racing it, smart. which is actually really smart of Josh. If you're not comfortable in the car, why go out and wad it up again? Right, right. Like he literally just wadded it up, just got it fixed. What's the point of going out and wadding it up again? Uh, exactly. So they pulled their entry out. They're down there watching today, spectating now, but sure. Josh Daniel will not be racing. Ah, that's too bad. So then I'm guessing this would be the 41 of Justin Lofton, another Mason all-wheel drive truck. Yeah, it uh, should be on the line. Yep. Fox sponsored. That's Toby Price finishing his run up. That is Justin Lofton, like you said, sitting there waiting for his turn to go. Toby Price looking really, really smooth. Yeah. Which a lot of times the fast the fast runs look smooth, right? Well, that's the thing you ever watch in car, you know Rob McCachran, It's boring to watch because he's just one hand on the wheel cruising, but then boom, fast qualifier. Oh, hey, he's been leading the pack all day, but he's just out there on a Sunday cruise. It looks like yep. it's just full control of the vehicle. Well, actually, one other person I just got, Eric Husted, converted a two-wheel yep. drive to all-wheel drive. You're right. Okay. So there we go. Someone texted me that. Thank you, Pete. So there's been three people now that have done it that I know of. Here goes Justin Lofton in the Aw Beef truck. Some of the best beef around. Sporting that new black and gold Fox livery on the front half of the truck. 
Yeah, I got to get used to his being gold in the front because I'm used to it being like orange, uh -huh. right? So yeah. I didn't even realize that was him earlier. Yep. The side is still orange. Yep. Like the door is orange or the bedside, uh -huh. but the front is now gold. He's definitely somebody as well that could put himself in the top spot for qualifying. You know, Lofton's always quick. You know, he gets the truck out front, can run up front, pace all day, and then same thing as most of these guys. It's usually just some unlucky gremlin that knocks him out. Yeah. So hopefully for them, like I said, we're talking about everybody's bad luck now. Let's get it all shook out, get <laughs> yeah. it out of the way qualifying, and let's have a good racing season. Yeah, some of those things you just, you can do everything right. You can buy all the best parts. You got the best uh, prep guys. You can do everything right, and there's just a, a failure sometimes. There's yep. nothing that you did wrong. Just there's failure. It's off-road racing. It's a tough thing about it. And that's why you never know who's going to win until the race is over. Somebody, I mean, I've seen people literally break a mile from the finish line when they had an hour's lead, mm -hmm. and then somebody else won that class. You, yep. know, you, you never know until you cross that finish line. Exactly. Here on the line, we've got the 87 of Dallas Luttrell. TSA Motorsports, homemade truck. Look at Justin Lofton, having a pretty smooth run so far. I feel like Justin's calmed down a bit the last few years too. Just I feel like he used to be a little bit crazier when he won uh, you know, all those mints in a row, when uh -huh. he won some, some other races back in the day, but then he also had some really big crashes in between there. So. Big crashes. <laughs> big ones, yeah. yeah. So I think he's gotten a little bit uh, not more timid, but he's been a little smarter. Absolutely, yeah. That's got that's got a way of slowing you down. You yeah. know, you, you get in touch with reality a little bit. <laughs> it probably hurts, you know, yeah, after a while. Too, You're like, yeah. ah, let's not do that one again. Yeah, not just the checkbook, but physically as well. You yes, kind of kicks your butt in those things. Totally. Now, that's a part of it too. Growing up, you know, you got kids, you got things to worry about. You're not just some single wild dude out there putting your foot on the floor. That is very true. Yeah, Justin does have a couple of young kids yeah, now too. To start thinking about the consequences of all yeah. that stuff. So, unfortunately, sometimes that slows you down on the racetrack. All right, couple more times coming in. Get your pencils out. Number 34, <clears throat> Brock Dickerson is in with a 615. So 615 for Brock. And Kevin Thompson, 601. All right. So new, <clears throat> what is that, like fifth maybe or something yeah. like that? <clears throat> One, two, three, four. Yeah, I think fifth place for Kevin Thompson. So very respectable run there. Kevin Thompson, 601 in the number 70. Unofficial, of course. We have one more conversion. Dale Dondell also converted Big Booty Judy oh, two-wheel drive right. to four-wheel drive. That's right. So there's another one. So there's more than we than I thought right away. That's true. And that is actually the same conversion that Bean just did. Because yep. that was a racer truck as well. There's the 87 of Dallas Luttrell. Thank you, Craig, for that info. That's what's great about all these guys watching this today. They can feed us info. Yeah. Everybody's got Fisher's phone number. You text them. <laughs> Phone blows up the whole time. <laughs> All hours of the night, All, whenever you it want. It never stops. <laughs> if, if, I, if I had a dollar for every time I had to answer a Starlink or a Garmin GPS question, uh -huh. I'd be in a trophy truck. There you go. So there it is. Text fish. <laughs> no. <laughs> Elon's going to have to start paying me for all the tech support. All right, 87 Dallas Luttrell. Larry Raglan drives that truck sometimes in some yeah. of these races. Uh -huh. Always cool to see when Larry gets in there. Mm -hmm. Speaking of Larry, he's coming racing soon. He's going to be racing in Nora. Is it cool, right. Larry Raglan? Quick hit for you guys. You can see through the dust here. We've got the '63 of Ruben Torres. He's a Tisco two-wheel drive truck. Uh, should have a very similar body to the other Torres entry, the red with the Nissan on it. We are getting towards the end of our uh, trophy trucks here. Quick. We've got about maybe 12 left or so. Yeah, these guys are, well, Yeah, fast so far it's been pretty fast. And then we're going to have six trophy truck legends on the entry list that are going to go after these guys. It's Dallas Luttrell out there in the 87. I said Ruben Torres in his new Mason all-wheel drive. He's going to be next on the line. Justin Lofton coming into the finish. He should be finishing any time now. I think this is the last left and then a right somewhere here and then we across the finish line pretty soon. Maybe a couple more turns to go. Yeah, there's a lot of people out there now. The word got out. 
Qualifying is actually a really good thing to go and spectate because it's uh, it's all excitement, right? It's just everybody's mm -hmm. full out. So oh, yeah. <laughs> there's a, and, and they're really close together. You don't have to stand there very long without seeing the next yeah, car. Exactly. Three that minutes and you get a car up. coming by every three minutes. It looks like we got somebody with a hot mic down there in the pits. <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> Did you hear anything good? No, nothing too good. Ah. <laughs> All right, Dallas Luttrell in the 87 coming by. It's got a TRX grill on there. It's like a Dodge, it's got a Dodge body. Not too many of those out there. That's kind of cool too. I like it when the guys switch up the body. Like everybody yeah. has like a Ford Raptor look body or oh, whatever. Yeah. Perfect you know. example right here is a Nissan body. Yeah, that's cool, something different yeah, too, absolutely. right? Yeah. It's got a 63 Ruben Torres. So that's a newer Tisco chassis. Um, so is it a Nissan cool engine? <laughs> kind of. So yeah. someone will text us what engine's in there. Yeah, it's probably a KA24 or some like yeah. SR20, some import Nissan motor. Yeah. What we got going on in that thing? <laughs> Four cylinders, letting it go. Yep. Yeah. So if you guys are just tuning in, this is qualifying right now going on for the race. It's going to start on Saturday. So tomorrow we have Tech and Contingency that'll be going on all day, and they will be uh, live broadcasting that as well from down on the Malacon, one of the most fun places to have Tech and Contingency, right on the beach. Although the one in La Paz looked pretty awesome last uh -huh. year for the Baja 1000. That yeah. was probably the best tech and contingency that scores ever had was on the Malacan in La Paz. That was epic. But tomorrow it'll be on the Malacan in San Felipe. And then on Saturday morning, the bikes will start off super early. And then the cars will be starting off a little bit after that. So if you do mess something up on the truck today, you have all day tomorrow to be able to fix it. Mm -hmm. So that's why you can push pretty hard today. Yeah. You know, if, if you crash or you got to fix something, you can you can even go back to the to the states real quick, go to a shop. There is some shops down in Mexico, but if you have to go back to San Diego or something, it's not end of the world. No, it's definitely doable. Yeah. So, so you can see, your there you go, yep. right there. So the, the four wheel race start. I got to double check that 7:30 though. I think it's a little bit later than that for so. the four wheel race start. I think that's the staging time for four wheel start. But the motor race, it says 5.30. Tech and contingency is tomorrow at 8 a.m. So we'll double check that four-wheel start time for you guys. Next on the line, we've got the 51 of Steve Olgus. Uh, I believe he's in a geyser truck, two-wheel drive. Should be sporting that new black and gold Fox livery. I'm kind of excited to see some more times when we get them. Cameron Steele, Toby Price, Tracy Graff time. That's what I'm excited yeah. to hear. All right, the race start is at 9 a.m. on Saturday for the four-wheel vehicles. So 9 a.m. race start. Good shot here of the 87. Seen a couple of people lose it here in this corner earlier today. And it seems like that rut's kind of gotten dug in deep enough to where it's kind of holding everybody in place unless you cut it way too short. Yeah, as long as you don't clip the inside. Oh, we're getting a little sideways there. Ooh, that hole right there is getting pretty big too coming out of that spot. That's something to think, you know, these are the, the ultimate off-road machines here, right? And when you see them finally get upset or kick or do something wild, like that's got to be one heck of a hole that they just went through to upset Definitely. an unlimited truck. For sure. You know, we kind of get a little compliant here watching these trucks online and you're like, oh man, come on, what's that guy doing? You don't realize how massive the terrain is that they're driving their trucks through. Oh yeah. And, and from the air, it's way different than on the ground, right? Oh, like the, yeah. the drone camera is so deceiving what these holes look like. Even that drop off right there, it doesn't look like anything from here, but look at what the trucks are doing when they go through that drop off. That's a huge hit. Cool. And these are trucks with 40 inch tires on them. Yeah. I just got some info here that the 51 of Steve Olgas is actually being driven by his son, Jack. Okay. Yeah. So that's exciting and fun. So Jack's had some pretty good luck uh, recently. Well, he went from from a high, from a Did win a to crash? a DNF. Yeah, yeah just so, had a big crash. <laughs> yeah, we got ups and downs. So maybe we'll keep the trend going. Maybe we'll get a good good finish here out of the qualifying for Jack. Yeah. So this is that they actually switched them around on the Torres here. So this is the Tisco Tisco truck that's here. So the Mason all wheel drive went with the other Torres entry that went. Yeah, earlier. earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, this is the two wheel drive. Yep. So it has the Nissan body on it. Yeah. But similar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Similar thing. I like it. I think it's cool. I'm all about it.
All right, so hopefully we have some more times coming in for you guys soon. I should be getting Cameron Steele's time along with Toby Price. That's the one I'm really waiting to see right now. I think that may be our best shot at a, at a top time coming still. We have a couple. We got Rob McCachran that's coming up a little bit later. That is going to be an interesting one to talk about and see what time he does. He is in a brand new, to him, uh, Jimco all-wheel all drive truck, the yep. fastball truck. And something, somebody else to think about is the number 38 of Eric Houston. Like, kind of yes. has won everything stateside recently. And I think Very he's true. just waiting for, a, like I said, a good day of racing down here, down south. And, you know, he's a, definitely a front runner and could be a front contender when it comes down to a race like this. And he's in an all-wheel drive that he Correct. converted, right? We Correct. just found yep. that out a little bit ago. Oh, that was there there's Jack. There. Yeah. Getting wild. I love it. Up on two wheels, or was that one wheel yeah. there? <laughs> on the gas, brother. Talk about a respectful kid. Like Never lift. It's so nice. We were staging at the Mint the other weekend. He came walking by, shook everybody's hand, introducing himself to everybody. Like Steve raised a good kid, kid there with Jack. Well, that's good. He takes after his dad because yeah, I've never heard anybody too. say anything bad about Steve either. One of the nicest guys in off-road. Oh, there it is. Yep, slowed you down a little bit there in that corner, but it's all right. You make it back up in the straightaway. And I think that's just the big downfall to the to the two-wheel drive truck is just when you bobble something like that deep in your corner, it's just so hard to get your momentum back up and going. Yeah, from from zero back to from 30 back to 50 or yeah, whatever it exactly. is, right? That's what the big difference is. Tough. All right, I got some more times for you guys. Here yes. we go. Get your pens out. Cameron Steele, number 16, 623. So 623 for Cameron. Toby Price, 551. One. Whoa! So 551, Toby Price into second place. Alan Impudia still in first with a 549. So the 46, Toby Price, 551, new second place. And then Tracy Graff in the 58, six minutes and 24 seconds in a brand new truck that they never drove until this morning. <laughs> yeah. so that brand new converted, converted truck, truck to yeah. all wheel drive. Converted to all wheel drive. So 624 for Tracy Graff in the 58. So there's your times for you guys. Solid work. Congratulations, guys. That's a good run. So next group of times we'll get when we get some should include Justin Lofton, which should be a very fast time as well, mm -hmm. most of the time. It's hard for us to tell if somebody had a good run or not because we're not watching them the whole time, right? right. So right. we can only tell what we can see right there. We don't know as soon as the camera goes off them, he might have blown the next corner. <laughs> Who do we have next here on the line? Uh, I want to say that looks like Kit Stokes, which would put yes. kind of out of a so kind of out of order here. Somebody just told me they have not seen Rob McCachran down there yet. Oh, so I'm not sure what's up with that. That's a little bit weird because Rob was he is racing. He's entered. I know he was testing the truck. I I know they were down there, but they haven't seen him over there yet. Huh. So not sure what's going on with Rob McCachran. If anybody out there knows. Maybe you can text us and update us, but uh, it looks like you are correct in Kit Stokes in the 47 is next on the line. Which is one heck of an iconic truck. Yes. So anybody that paid attention off-road racing in the late 90s, early 2000s, I guess early to mid 2000s, that would be the Allen Fluger, old Allen Fluger truck. Uh, very unique car, uh, did very well in its time, and it's really cool to see it up and running still. I'm wondering what truck this is here. I'm wondering if this is a 78 of Tracy Poole. Yep. So that's a 78 of Tracy Poole, a geyser entry from right. Bozeman, Montana. Yeah, one of the out. Uh, so that's a G6, right? It looks Correct. like with the Correct. tires yeah. that he said. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, all right, Robin Cochran, it sounds like you were having a little bit of issue, little mechanical problems with the truck. So they're working on it. Not sure if they're going to be qualifying today Ooh, or not. That's so bummer for Rob. That just means he's going to start in the back as long as they can get it fixed for Saturday. Once again, that was a brand new truck. So I think he had driven it maybe one time, they yeah. said before this. Mm -hmm. So always gonna be a little bit of issues with the new truck, but hopefully they can get it fixed enough to be able to go race on Saturday. Yeah. We also skipped over the 27 entry of Jordan Brenthal, or Jonathan Brenthal. True, we haven't seen them go either, huh? No. This is Tracy Poole here, 78. Forty-seven and Kit Stokes taking off the line. Four seven. 
cool new colorway and everything. That truck's changed colors many, many a times. And kind of a big, I like this teal and white. I think it looks pretty sharp. Another color that's going to stand out against the uh, you know, harsh, warm tones of the desert. Yeah, right. You get some nice, cool colors going on. Good shot here, the 78 of Tracy Poole. Tighten it up for that corner a little bit. Boom, there you go. All right, so, so if you just joined us right now, we have Alan Ampudia is in first with a 549. That is currently the time to beat. Behind Alan Ampudia was Toby Price with a 551. And then we had Luke McMillan with a 554.2. And Christopher Pulvardi, Pulvardi with a 554.9. I think those were the top uh, four or however many I just read. <laughs> yeah. There is Kit Stokes. So cool story about this truck. This is the old Allen Pfluger truck. Uh -huh. You said this is a Porter built truck initially. Uh, Kit bought it a couple years ago. They've done a lot of changes to it. They had uh, JT has been working on that in Utah, made some updates to it. And this is their first race with that truck in Baja. Oh, so, right, right, yeah, right. First, first time Allen Pfluger's truck has been raced in Baja since Allen had it. That's cool. They've done a couple stateside races, but they sure, haven't sure. done a Baja sure, race. Sure. I think all of us, at a younger age, had the fearless Fluger poster hanging up in our bedrooms, garages. Yeah, with somewhere. the Troy Lee paint job on it, oh, right? I mean, the, I, I still think that was one of I the best. I might be a little biased, but I still I think that was one of the best paint jobs that uh -huh. we've ever had on any off-road vehicle. I agree. Was that I Troy Lee paint agree. job. It I was just it, awesome. I have the poster framed. I'm pretty sure it's in my garage at home with all yes. those trophies we were talking about just stacked up in the right? top shelf. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I actually picked that body up from Wally World who really? painted it. And I was never so nervous in my life loading oh that thing gosh. in the trailer because I had to check for it too. <gasps> so I know how much it costs to yeah. get it just painted. Oh and, and that thing was not cheap, let no. me tell you. So I was I had blankets all over that thing on the trailer on the way back to Hoffman's shop. And it was, uh, yeah, it was pretty cool. And then you had the pro truck that was painted to match yep. it. Dude, so, so that cool. was, uh, yeah, it was pretty cool. <laughs> that was a very, very cool time in off-road when things are kind of one-off and different and unique and yeah. everybody was putting their own touch on everything and colorways yep. were different. And, you know, look at this body. I mean, that's the same shaped body that Fluger ran back in the day. And it's same just, body. Yeah. It's a great design, a great shape. It's so unique. And like, in my opinion, nothing's really ever looked that sharp since. Oh, it looks good still. Yeah. Yeah. Billy Gasper, one of the ones over there that worked with Danny Porter, one of the two that built that, that truck. Billy's still around. Racing. I'm not sure what Danny Porter's doing anymore nowadays. That would be the 38 entry of Eric Husted. We've been talking about another uh, all-wheel drive converted truck. Yeah, hopefully Kit has a good uh, good run here. Super cool dude. Him and his wife Stephanie, both really fun. Yeah. Good good people. Hopefully they have a good run. He raced the Baja 1000 in the 299 with Charles Durant. They had some issues with the truck. They didn't finish the race. So he's like, all right, I'm going to go do it with my own truck, my own team. And now he's in charge. Obviously, he's going to cost a little more, but yeah. you got to pay to play, right? That's it. That's it. This looks like the Next on our list would be the number two, but I'm kind of feeling this might be the 25 of Craig Christie in the Brenthal. We'll see here in a second. The body's looking a little Brenthal shaped. Yeah, we're almost down to the last of the entries here that are going to qualify because a couple of these guys are not qualifying. I know that. Like Gary Magnus is not going to qualify. He's taking a rear start, so he won't be going today. So this might be one of the last trucks going here. Did uh, did Husted go? Did we see him yep, go? Yep, yep. Okay. Husted just took off, so he should be out there on the track. There, there he is. Right there. Perfect. Uh, somebody else that could, you know, potentially work his way up towards the front. He does very well here, stateside races. Looks like they kind of rearranged the spares in the back a little bit. Kind of lay that weight down differently. I know he's got a lot of trick stuff in that truck. A lot of tanks in different places and fuel in different places and things transferring around. So kind of cool, like you said earlier, a one-off-ish truck, right? Yeah, a lot of engineering goes into that car, and it's definitely one one of the reasons that 
always driven me to off-road racing is just the ingenuity and the creativeness of each car. Yeah. And, you know, some of that's gone away recently in these years with, you know, with great shops that did it all for other people. And you just buy a car that works well. Yep. And so when you see something like this on the racetrack, it just definitely gets me fired up and reminds me why I enjoy this sport so much. It's because it's cool to see something different out there. Oh, it's definitely fun. Yeah, so Husted, and then we're going to have, uh, see, Chad Broughton, maybe? So that's what we're trying next. to figure out here, the next, because the shape of the body ahead, upcoming at next, looks brenthal -ish. so I'm curious to see who it is. I know that they sold their old truck back to Jason McNeil, the three-seat that they had been right, racing. Right, right, so maybe they're in a brenthal Yeah, yeah I forget yeah. what they bought, but I know that Jason McNeil bought their old truck back. He's using it as a pre That's the fun thing about that three seat is that you drive from the middle of the thing. You yes, got correct. Two, one seat on like each pistols. side of you. Yeah, yep. it was like Pistol's truck. It was, it was kind of a copy of Pistol's truck. Yeah. I know Jason's excited for that because he can put his kids in there and take them out pre running and ripping around. Yeah, definitely more fun. So we'll see here what this number is. 66. So that would be Chris. Chris Hirsch? Yep. That would be a Blitzkrieg truck out there. All right. So we did not see Chad Broughton and we did not see Craig Christie. So this may that may be the last trophy truck right yeah. there. We might be working our way to the see. legends next. And that would be Clay Lawrence would be next. So if we see the 85L pull up on the line, we know that's going to be the last of our trophy trucks that just went. Which might make sense because it was all black. And I know that the front of those Lawrence equipment, which they make tortilla equipment, not construction equipment. Uh, trucks that are all black in the front there. I'm going to shout out one more time. I need a tortilla press, guys. Kick one down over here. Fish and I both need one. Yeah, I need some tortillas. <laughs> so Chad Broughton bought, they bought one of the old Potts trucks, the Geyser. The short one. Yeah, so the, the old Geyser truck, from, or the Potts truck, the Geyser truck, because now they're just oh, racing the, the Menzies Huseman truck, Potts is, so they sold their Geyser truck, oh, and that's okay. what the Broughtons got it, uh, got bought. It, got it. Pot still has the short racer as well. So that's I don't know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Good shot here, the Norwal truck. So we're still waiting on quite a bit of times here, waiting on Lofton, Latrell, Torres, Olgus. Tracy Poole, Kit Stokes, Husted. Yeah, so the times we had so far, we had Alan Ampudia in first, like we said. He's got the fastest time so far with a 549, and then it was Toby Price with a 551. Then it was Luke McMillan with a 554. Also with a 554, Christopher Polvardi, and then Bryce Menzies with Take a 557. Off. That's going to be your top up. five or so right there. All unofficial. Oh, sorry, Tabo was a 556. So Tabo is going to be in front of Bryce by one second. All unofficial. What a stacked field of really fast trophy truck drivers. Yeah. All right, so more times coming in. Get your pens out. The number 41, Justin Lofton, 604 for Justin Lofton. So not a bad run, not the fastest, but pretty pretty decent time, conservative time there, 604. The 87 Dallas Luttrell is a 640 for the 87 Dallas Luttrell. And then Ruben Torres is a 648. So 648 for Ruben Torres. And that's all I got for you guys. In the next group, we'll have Jack Olegas this time and Tracy Pool. Well, there's the number two going off the line there, Chad Broughton. Okay, so they were just they just switched with a couple people, it yep. looks like. What's the one we saw go before them? Was that the Chris Hirsch was yep. last, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So it's 66. So let's go in there. Chad Broughton headed out on course. That was a 66 right there, I think, right? Uh-huh. Yep, right here. So then yeah, we're going to be... black number two. It's all black. All black. Yep. Yep, all black number two. So this is Chris Hirsch here. 
Good shots here. Like Fish had said earlier, thanks to our drone operators for out there battling the elements, getting us these great shots for everybody to enjoy back home. Be able to sit and ignore your boss for a couple hours and watch the yeah. race cars drive around. See what truck this is here. Hard to tell. So I think we're going to show some times in a minute, and it looks like Bryce's time, like we said, these are always unofficial. Bryce's time may actually be a 550, not a 557, I'm oh, being told. Oh, okay. Yeah, that so would So that, that would jump him all the way up into second place in front of Toby Price, because Toby was a 551. Oh, right, right, right. And Bryce is going to be a 550 unofficially. All of this is unofficial. Yeah, all of this is unofficial. The official results will be out later today once qualifying is over. Gonna be the Broughton truck there. Yep. Oh yeah, you can see the two brand apparel sign on the side. That's what that is. That is uh, Pistol Pete's brother. He started the clothing company, kind of dedicated to Pistol. So pretty cool. These uh, Broughtons are always been big supporters. That's what the number two Pistol mm -hmm. run the number. Always big supporters, and they got the two brand apparel on the uh, on the side there. It's pretty cool to see Pistol's legacy uh, living on. There, there you go. This is unofficial. Alan Ampudia in first with a 549 that Bryce Menzies just behind him in second, Toby Price in third, Luke McMillan in fourth, Christopher Polvardi in fifth, Tavo Vidosla in sixth, Kevin Thompson in seventh, Justin Lofton, Gabriel Torres, and Eric Husted. So you can see a difference of only, what is that, six seconds between the top six cars? Mm -hmm. That's pretty close racing there. Now, if you're at home paying attention to this and you look, uh, you'll notice that those are all all-wheel drive trucks. All all-wheel drive trucks. Yeah. Hmm, what do you know? Yeah, <laughs> or is anybody surprised? Uh, <laughs> this is an all-wheel drive course, clearly. It is absolutely. Corner to corner, this is definitely all-wheel drive. Now, race day through San Felipe, the big bumps and the straightaways, you might have a touch of an advantage in a two-wheel drive, but yes. it's just it's just hard these days. Yeah. I'm a big fan. I'm a big advocate for two-wheel drive, so I'm rooting for all, all my two-wheel <laughs> drive guys. I'm here rooting for you. <laughs> There's not too many left. No, but I'm here, man. <laughs> I'm a nostalgic kind of guy. I'm hoping for the best. There's the Broughtons there. Moving along in the number two. Good yep. to see the two back out in San Felipe. I know this was Pistol's favorite race down here in San Felipe, too. Yeah, we saw another car go off the line there. I wasn't able to catch the number on it. Not sure who that was. Had a nice teal, white, and gray paint yeah. job. Um, was that, who did we... wasn't something I didn't recognize. It could have been... We miss? Was it Brenthal? No, it was not a Brenthal body or truck. Maybe Craig Christie? It's, it's, no, but that's a Brenthal truck too, listed as. Yeah, so. yeah, I don't know. It could be a late entry. Could be. They weren't on our, on our list here, so we'll see if we can figure out who that is. If anybody knows who that is before we see it, let me know. It looks like they were a late entry because they're not on our list. So I'm thinking here we're getting ready to jump into our trophy truck legends, which is the same truck, same rules, same everything as trophy truck except you gotta be 50 years old or older to enter in this class. We've got six trucks entered in the class. I'm not sure how many are gonna be qualifying. Some of these guys may take a rear start. Uh, the way this is gonna work is wherever they qualify in the overall stack up of unlimited trucks is where they will start. They will not start as their own class. They will start intermixed with all of the unlimited trucks, those trophy trucks as well. And this is most likely the 85L here, right? Coming yeah. up next. That's kind of what I'm thinking. Lawrence, or Lawrence truck. And we just got confirmation Rob Mack is currently at Pete's camp working on stuff over there. So it does not sound like Rob McCachron is going to be qualifying today. Nah. So hopefully they can get the truck fixed for Saturday and he will just have to start in the back of the pack on Saturday. This is Chad Broughton right here and the number two coming through. Oh, getting way up there, there on go. the bike. That's a way to do it. Stay on the gas, carry mm -hmm. it through the corner. That's it. It's like an old I-beam truck. Front hey, corner is always just in the air, right? That's it. That's it. <laughs> that's how you drive those things. Yeah, less wheel on the ground, less drag, less friction, more speed. Let it rip.
there off the line. Looks like we got the 85L of Clay Lawrence. Um, fish, like I would said earlier, filled me in. Lawrence equipment is not construction equipment. It is <laughs> tortilla <laughs> making <Tortillas>. equipment. <laughs> tortilla equipment. I'm going to drive that thing in so everybody understands that because I had no idea. <laughs> I don't think it, but most people don't. I did never had an idea. I thought it was cool. equipment, right? You yeah. hear equipment, you think like tractors or trucks or whatever. Especially in this industry, yeah. Yeah, most people are construction, right? So, check out the entry list though. Whose name do you see on there with the 85L? Ooh, I see a Rossler name there. Larry Rossler. Ah. I bet you that that is Larry Rossler in the truck because if you have Larry Rossler driving with you, he would be qualifying. So is that a 33? 33 is what we got. And I don't have a number for a 33, so it's a late entry. I'm not super familiar with the number 33 either, and I don't recognize that truck. Me neither. Stand up spares in the back. It looks like an Alumacraft style body. Looks like a mid cell almost. See the fuel cell there in the center? Yeah. If anybody at home knows who that is, let us know. <laughs> yeah, we're not familiar with the 33. You just Google Fish's name and his phone will pop right on up. <laughs> yeah. Shoot him a message. Uh, curious to see whose truck that is and who that is out there running. Oh, Roberto Romo, somebody just said in the oh, okay. chat here. So there you go. All right. Roberto Romo. So that is Luke McMillan's old racer truck, most ah, likely, right? Got it. That's okay. the truck that they bought sense. before. So Luke McMillan's old two wheel drive racer truck is the 33. Roberto Romo, so late entry. He's, he's always fast too, one of the younger drivers. Yeah. I think he's been around 20 or something like that, the younger upcoming driver. Had the a body, few good runs in the truck. Body looks a little different there, huh? Maybe they got rid of the racer style body and put something different on it. Yeah. Looks a little. It little, did look like a fresh body Looks design. boxier, you know? Yeah. Here on the line, we've got the 1L of Gustavo Vildozo Sr. Uh, same truck as his son, Tavo's racing, so. I would talk about side bets. We think father and son side bets are going on. Can you imagine that? All right, Dad, let's see right? how fast you can go. <laughs> but it's probably Larry Rossler. Ah, true. <laughs> <laughs> so that might change the side bet. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to take a Larry Rossler in almost any yeah. bet that we're betting on anything true. to do with off-road racing. Hmm. So interesting move for Larry Rossler. You know, he was racing before in the Baja Jerky uh, vehicle. I don't see any Baja jerky vehicles around anymore. So I think they, you know, at this race, I haven't seen any. Sure. So s things change all the time. Larry, I'm going to guess Larry probably doesn't have that ride anymore. So that's yeah. why he moved over to this ride here in the 85 L with mm -hmm. the Lawrence team. Yeah. So Romo's racing a different truck. This race, it's not Luke's. That's why it looks that's different. A, yeah, yeah, so okay. there we go. Yeah. I wonder what truck it is. The coastal aluminum. Is the, is the side of it. Huh. I don't know. We'll have to do some research. This is the 1L of Gustavo taking off. There you go. I know who's driving that truck. Ricky Johnson? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ricky and Gus have teamed up for a while now. They, they win pretty much every race. That's why they have the 1L. L in a red background on there. They are the class champion from last year. So Gustavo Vidosal is senior. We got Tavo's dad there driving his truck. They both have the same type of trucks. They're both Mason all-wheel drive trucks. Gustavo senior races in the legend class and is class champion from last year. So next on the start line, see that's a look at the 1L right there. You can tell that by the white on the top. We got Ricky Johnson most likely there in there driving. Next we're gonna have on our schedule is gonna be the 61L, David Payne. See him out running the drone here. That's that's the fastest yeah. section on the whole course, I think, is right there. That's pretty much the only wide open section. Wow. Everything else is open. turns. Yeah. All right, 
So the 1L, we've only have a couple trucks left. We got about four on our list if they all show up for qualifying. Four Legends trucks left. Next is gonna be the 61L David Payne from St. Louis, Missouri. Now he's got some cool names in here. If any of you monster truck fans are out there, his co-drivers are listed as Lee O'Donnell, D Damon Bradshaw. Damon Bradshaw? The old monster truck guy? Yeah, both of them, Lee <laughs> O'Donnell, yeah. We got, we got some cool, cool guys there. Oh, that's rad. So cool, the David Payne entry 61L next off the line. So it's always fun to look at who's driving, right? Because sometimes yeah. you'll see it, you'll see a name that's a driver of record and you don't know, but then you look at the other drivers that are listed and you're like, oh, that's interesting. Research here. Don't want to say anything that's like this. <laughs> Tucker, I need pictures. You're texting me info. I need pictures. There we go. 61L off the line. So David Payne there. So I think we have three more trucks going to go. We're going to have Greg Adler in the 65L going next. Then we'll have Rolf Helen, And then we will have Wade Porter. And that's the end of our list we'll see if anybody shows up late if anybody was uh we missed a couple trophy trucks so if a couple of them were able to make it to the start craig christie and uh i think it was just actually craig christie that that missed the start everyone else was uh was there so we'll see if craig shows up or not rob mack was we were told did not show up he was in pete's camp they were having some issues with the truck We should have some more times coming in, hopefully soon. Shot there at 61L, David Payne. Renthal truck. Well, with the option of no spares in the back. No spares. No spares. We were talking about earlier. There's a little bit of strategy, right? How much fuel do you put in? Do you run two spares, one spare, or no spare? Right. Everybody think, has a different strategy. What would you do on this course in your truck? Right now, if I was in that position right there, I would run as much rear weight as possible to make traction. Okay. So would you go full tank? No, I mean, I'd probably go half tank, two half spares. Tank. Okay. And two spares. Yeah. Half tank, two spares. Get that thing to sit right. Try and get it to dig. Depending on how the chassis moves. Yeah, because that's almost like if people are like, oh, why don't you go as light as possible? Well, the truck actually works worse yeah. a lot of times. No, no truck is designed to work and as light as possible, yeah. right? Yeah, you want to make it work, especially if you're looking for traction. And of course, like this, with all the silt and all the sand and how everything's getting chewed up, you want to make some bite. You don't want to just be breaking the tires loose and doing a burnout the whole day. Kind of. Yeah. <laughs> so you're going to want a little bit of weight back there to kind of get the rear end to settle down and sit in the holes and make for it. So that is David Payne's entry to 61L. If anybody knows who's actually driving, you'd be interested to know if Lee O'Donnell or Damon Bradshaw or David Payne is driving right now. So maybe let us know. Cool. Monster truck guy names there. I haven't seen a, seen a single slap wheel, so it was Damon Bradshaw. I know, right? <laughs> is this freestyle or is this uh, what event here? There goes Greg Adler right there. So Greg Adler off the line. An off-road warehouse vehicle, 65L.
Next here on the line should be the 37 of Rolf Helen, Mason all-wheel drive with driving partner Rick D. Johnson. This should be another fast time in that class. But they're actually all mixed, so if yeah, like we said, so Ricky Johnson, if he's qualifying, which I assume he is, he normally does. I think yeah. he has every time. He he very well could be starting in the top ten or top yeah. five overall in the trophy truck class even though he's in the legends yeah wherever he finishes today that time is going to be mixed with the trophy trucks I see. so hopefully we get some more times here i haven't got any times in a while here so i'm still waiting on jack oligus uh tracy pool kit stokes there's a bunch of guys we're still waiting on their times for so as soon as i get them i will uh, feed them to you guys and let you know Oh, what a cool name there. Look at the 65L of Greg Adler. Good buddy George Lamita is there in the passenger seat. Spent plenty of time in Jimco cars and every other other form of off-road race car, and it's cool to see him out there still racing. We used to work together a couple years. All right, so earlier I said that the uh, the 299 last year who Kit Stokes raced with, I said they had problems that they finished the race. Oh, boy. Apparently, everyone on their team is mad at me because I said they had problems. So Way to go, I, I fish. offended everybody. So they, their problems were not mechanical. So all of their prep guys have texted me and let me know they weren't mechanical problems. So <laughs> I just want to clarify that for everybody. The 299 did not have mechanical problems at the race, but they didn't finish the race, so I'd call that problems. <laughs> so sorry for offending everybody. Yeah. More proof. Everybody has Fish's phone number. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the 61L right there. So David Payne, still no sky wheelies or cyclones or anything. So probably no. not David Bradshaw. So who are we going with? David Payne? I think that's who's driving. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's a 65L there, the ORW machine of Greg Adler. Thirty-seven L there, taking off. Good looking truck. Thirty-seven L. They're one of the cars that usually has a really good uh, in-car stream going too. Yeah. I know the Baja One Thousand. Their in-car worked the best out of everyone in the race that I oh, was really? watching. It worked. I would say ninety percent of the race. It was pretty awesome. So cool. Those was really cool to watch. What great technology to have now, you know, be able to bring the viewers inside the car with you while you're out racing for the good and the bad, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe having the audio mic'd up might not be the best idea, but. Uh... I think it's awesome to watch, but I would never <laughs> want to be the one in there with it on, right? Like right. It, it makes great entertainment, but the yeah. things that you say in a race. In the heat of the moment, you got to watch yeah. P's and Q's. They're, they're fun to watch, but yeah. next thing you know, somebody's canceled. Yes, exactly. <laughs> We should only have one more truck there in line, the 53L of Wade Porter, uh, Brenthal entry out of Chico, to get some California. More times before we sign off here after that one, too. All right, so our qualifying is winding down. Only a couple cars left today. Pretty exciting day. We had a couple crashes earlier. No, no, nothing too major. We got a lot of spectators out there, so a lot of people had fun watching today. Hopefully, all you guys had fun watching. We had a bunch of drone or a couple drones up there at least. It got us some good views of the course. It was a five-mile qualifying course, and so far we have who do we have in front again? It was uh, Alan and Pudia, right? Five forty-nine. Yep. yep. Allen and Pudia, 549. Sorry, my notes are all over the place because I don't have a solid list here. Uh, 549, Allen and Pudia is your top qualifier of the day. As of now. As of now. I mean, looking down the list, I, honestly, yeah. I don't really see anybody that we didn't get a time from so far that is going to beat Allen and Pudia. True. Just stating facts. Er Eric Husted could have a pretty good time. I, I don't think he's going to beat Ampudia, but he yeah. could be pretty fast. But other than that, we're going to, I think Allen and Pudia is going to take the top spot. Get, uh, possibly the, the the one L with Ricky Johnson could mm -hmm. maybe potentially yeah. get there, but we'll see. Look at 
Jalen Nelson has been pretty smooth through Gaunt's corner. Yeah. That was the only one that had an issue there, right? It's Gaunt, Gaunt corner. We had uh, Tavo do a little understeer action through there. Tighten it back yep. up. Yep. And this should be the last truck off the line is what we're thinking. The 53L of Wade Porter from Chico, California. Driving in a, a Brenthal. Going to be the last truck off the line. So I'm going to try and get some more times for you guys if we can. Rob Mack may still be coming. Dun, dun, dun. Or he's going to actually, he wants a rear start. He's just going to take a rear start in the race. That's what it's like. So, not a rear start today, but in the race. All right, so our final cars for qualifying today are on the course. Successful day of qualifying, if I do say so myself. Uh, nothing too catastrophic, uh, no you know, race ending issues for anybody. Everybody should be making the start line on Saturday. A couple guys got a little polishing to do and waxing to do to have a pretty show car for the uh, tech and contingency tomorrow. Yeah, uh, is, is uh, Dan going to get his body back on, you think? I'm sure know. they're going to fix it up at least enough to yeah, get it on for contingency. Up, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you got some time. But. Yeah, we're still trying to get times for you guys, so I apologize. I, it's not that I'm not reading them to you. I just haven't got them for Jack Oligus down. Haven't got any times yeah. there yet. Yeah. So if we do get some before we sign off here, I will definitely read them to you guys. If not, they will be posted by score as soon as they are official. All of our times are unofficial, of course but they will be posting the unofficial times probably not long after this ends today. Don't know exactly when to tell you guys, but whenever they get them done. So we're on Baja time for that. Baja time. Solid run here in the 53L, Wade Porter. Just jamming through the dirt. That's usually the benefit of being one of the later qualifiers. You get tons of camera time because there's nobody behind you to go. So drone guys got time to catch up and want to run behind you and get some good shots. The, 50, the 37L here. Oh, back to the You get one other time. The 78 Tracy Pool I have is a 627. So 627 for the 78. That's the only other update I got so far for you guys. And we, we will do a, a leaderboard of the top 10 or so in a minute here as soon as these guys are done qualifying. Well, the top 10 that we have, at least so far. <laughs> Some of these other guys could jump in there that we don't have a time for yet. The unofficial, unofficial <clears throat> time. Unofficial. Unofficial. Is that Ricky Johnson going across the finish line there? That would be Rick D. Johnson. Rick D. Oh, the 37 the feeling, yeah. yeah. Uh-oh. Oh, off course for the 53. All right, Wade, you're the last man on track. We get to sit and watch you take, go for a rip. Yeah, you said nobody really wanted it up that yeah. bad. I was like, oh, no, we still got two cars right. on He's course good. Good. so you didn't jinx them. Yeah. We're crossing our fingers here. We're going to get 53 across the finish line <laughs> safe and ready for racing on Saturday. Yeah. Tighten it up here for this corner. As poor bushes sure got used as a backstop a few times today. All right, Wade Porter bringing it home for the 37th San Felipe 250. The last qualifier of the day. I think we're going to have a couple social clips in a minute as soon as he's done to show you guys. And then a little bit of a preview of what Saturday is going to look like. And hopefully we get some more times. Oof, those holes are getting big. It's just insane to see like how much this course has changed since eight o'clock this morning. Yes. Like how deep things have gotten, how <clears> the berms <throat> have gotten, you know, just the overall pace of everything is just kind of, you know, taking its toll.
So we talked about this with Jose G before, but you know, a lot of the, the UTV guys have asked if they can qualify too, because we have a lot of UTV entries nowadays in some of the big classes. And in the, you know, some of the other series you do get to qualify. Yep. So in the future, I don't know, we might see some more classes added in here, mm -hmm. right? It's only 2.30, it's not too late. We could yes. maybe do a couple more classes. Yeah. So I would be kind of stoked if we saw UTVs in the future. So yeah. maybe, maybe that will get added at some point here. Maybe the big UTV classes like yeah, the, the, the pro, the pro, pro classes, classes, the yeah, pro the, turbo, the, pro open. Mm -hmm, let, the let those ones. two classes yeah, qualify. Because it, it does make a big difference, especially in a race like this. If yeah. you start, you know, there's 30 of them and you start 30th yeah. by a random draw. Miserable. Like that's, that's pretty far back. A clean yeah. F100 there in the background. You see that? A nice no, little free runner. It. Hey. Nice. There's a cameraman. Pan back. Let's see that thing. <laughs> yeah. So Wade Porter here is our final truck on course today, the 53L in the Legends class. And then we'll try to run down some of the times that we have. Alan and Pudi is still sitting at that top spot though with a 549 unofficially. Bryce Menzies in second with a 550 just behind him. So that's, that's very, very close there. And then you have, you had Luke McMillan with a 554.2, Christopher Polvardi with a 554.9, Tavo with a 556. Uh, before him, we actually had Toby Price, sorry, in there with a 551. So he was actually right behind Bryce Menzies. So Toby's going to be starting up there in, in third, that would be. And then we'll have to wait and see. Where the, the 1L with Ricky Johnson is going to be very fast. He's going to be somewhere up in that top area. Ah, there you go. <clears throat> Congratulations, right. Wade Porter. I didn't jinx you. They finished. You made it to the finish. <laughs> all right. That is all of the cars. We, yeah. we made it through. Everybody made it. Yeah. So, so hoping perfect. That, uh, hoping that everybody will hit the start line on Saturday. Oh, we got some in cars. Exactly. Here. Here's, here's a couple shots throughout the day today. Right off the start, it was a little bit wet, right? You Just can see that after the water truck. That's why you never want to go right after the mm -hmm. water truck, right? Gotcha. I mean, see, there's the water truck, and then you go, and you're soaked. Yep. <laughs> so this was earlier today. Everybody was lined up. Let's look at your trophy trucks. That's your trophy truck spec earlier. That is uh, Tavo showing you how to blow a corner without rolling the car. So good job, Tavo, there. Get back on course as fast as you can. We got Bryce Menzies getting up on two wheels for a second, getting a little bit squirrely. You see that big rock? He barely avoided that thing. Yeah, that was gnarly. The Herps in car. We're going to have a lot more of this on race day. A lot more of these will be yep. working. There's B more in the helicopter. Uh, there's Toby Price, one of the fast qualifiers of the day. Top three is what it looks like. So Toby always fast. First time he hasn't qualified first. So what happened, Toby? Man. We got Kit Stokes in the old Pfluger truck. Let's see what else we got. Let's look at more of them off the line. That was the 1L there. It was a good day. The weather turned out to be pretty good from what it looked like from here, at least, right? Yeah. We had a little bit of wind. You can see the dust kind of cleared out later in the day. Didn't really affect the racers at all. You're, you're basically in your own dust at some right. of the spots, not right. another car. So nothing you can do about that. And then here's a couple social clips, too. We had uh, all you guys sent in to the Score International Instagram throughout the day. Thanks to everybody who was tagging them. This is a couple clips that they got tagged in. That was Adam. Look at all that water. See, oh, this, yeah. this wrapped the water truck Big dumped mess. right there. Yeah. You're, you're sitting there on the line, and you're like, come on, really? Yeah, yeah. Like, you just see the truck dumping water in front of you. You know you're screwed. <laughs> Christopher Polvardi, always fast. Cool. Yeah. Very, very fast. Coming through the end finish of the timing loop there. Again. I'm through sideways. That might be the fastest finish. We saw. I mean, we didn't see everybody there, but that no. was pretty fast pretty through quick. the finish Yeah, line, yeah, yeah. Right? On the pipe all the way through. Yeah. Dan McMillan, visible body. Yeah, best numbers on the truck today. Yeah. The award goes to Dan McMillan. Let's see the 23 from a mile away. You can definitely see what number of truck that is. Brother Luke McMillan, and they're still working on getting the times up for you guys, so it might be after this broadcast, but as soon as they get the official times, they will be posted. I, I don't have any more times for you guys right now. I apologize for everybody that didn't trust me. There's nobody uh, more frustrated than myself up here today <laughs> on that situation, so I apologize for that. I can only do what I could do. There's Toby Price. Looking good. Same clip of Toby. 
All right. Well, th there you go. That was our qualifying. Yeah. What do you think? Pretty, pretty fun. Uh, yeah. Pretty fun qualifying. Here's a look at the rest of the race or the rest of the events this week. Tomorrow, Tech and Contingency is going to start at 8 a.m. That will be live broadcast also right here on the SCORE YouTube page. Then we got the motor race start early Saturday, 6 in the morning. And then the four wheel race start is Saturday at 9 a.m. So yep. 9 a.m. is the correct time for mm -hmm. the four wheel start on Saturday. Yep. And I think that the first finisher in the four wheel truck is going to be around 1 p.m. I think so too. We're around I four can, hours. I can so. confidently say that. Yep. Here, here's unofficial leaderboard right here. We got Alan Impudia in first, Bryce Menzies in second, Toby Price in third, Luke McMillan fourth, Christopher Pulvardi fifth, Tava Vidosala sixth, Kevin Thompson seventh, uh, Justin Lofton eighth, Gabriel Torres ninth, and Eric Husted ten. And once again, those are all all wheel drive trucks, I believe, right? Uh, yes. It looks yep. like it. Everything there is all wheel drive. I think everything there is a Mason except for Husted's truck. Yep. So Mason dominates the top nine spots yeah. in Trophy Truck Legends. Here's some times. Now, these are going to be mixed in. So yeah. they didn't mix these on the first board. Gustavo Vidosla is showing at 6.09. You got Ralph Helen in the 37, Greg Adler, David Payne, Wade Porter, and Clay Lawrence. Those will be mixed yep. on their time. So 6.09, that's probably going to be a top uh, six or mm -hmm. seven-ish yep. for uh, Gustavo Vidosla and Ricky Johnson there in the 1L. Yeah. That's your unofficial results. They will post the final results and official results, I would say, in a couple hours here. And make sure you tune in here to the YouTube page uh, for live stream everything on Saturday. The whole race, there'll be another broadcast team up here, chit-chatting yep. your way through everything, uh, keeping everybody up to date. Like we said, it is a quick race. Uh, like I said, start at 9, potentially first leader by 1 o'clock is yep. Fish's prediction. So, yeah, it'll um, be right, right about then. Right and about actually, yep. the, the course that we're talking about, I think we have a little thing to show everybody. This is what the course is going to be like on Saturday. Let's take a look at that exceptionally stunning Baja Peninsula course and see what the world's best desert racers will be battling. At a total distance of just over 286 miles of rugged Baja California terrain, the competitors will start in the picturesque El Maricón. The course runs in a counterclockwise direction out of and back to the start and finish line in San Felipe. Our drivers will begin by heading north to the Zoo Road Crossing up to the El Chinero area. Just after race mile 83, we have the BF Goodrich Pit 1 where drivers will stop for some fuel. From there, they push north until they hit an extended long loop through Laguna Saldana, where they circle back round to race south to the Arroyo Grande and through Arroyo Arrejal. The course has one physical checkpoint at race mile 201 as racers cross Highway 3. Racers will pick up speed as they continue south across the Diablo Dry Lake Bed. As they turn east towards Morelia Junction, racers will stop off at race mile 238 for the BF Goodrich Pit 2 to refuel and prepare for the final stretch of the race. Finally, after heading east through the infamous Chanate Wash, the drivers will head north for the final sprint to the finish line on the El Maricón. Well, that looks like one heck of a racetrack. Looks fun, huh? Yeah, it looks fast. We should be down there racing that thing. I wish. Maybe we still got time. Year. Let's go get your truck and go down there. It's way too far from being ready for that. Oh, next year. Come next on. Year. We Let's got put a, a plan days. together. We're yeah, racing that yeah. one next year. All right. Well, I hope you guys had fun uh, tuning in today. Uh, I know you guys are out on social, had a lot of fun throughout the day, and it's going to be an exciting race this weekend. This class is stacked. The trophy truck class is stacked. Spec trucks, we might have the most ever in any race. So I think that'll so. be fun to watch. Yep. If there's more than uh, there was last year at this race, it's going to have a new record. Yeah. But uh, yeah, great, great time here today. Thanks, uh, Nick Eisenhower, for joining me. I am Austin Fish Farner. We had a great day with you guys today. Uh, apologize for about the times I did the best that we could and uh, we'll see the official results posted in a little bit but I think that's going to wrap it us wrap it up for us here <laughs> in the studio and uh, you tune in on Saturday yep. we'll have uh, coverage here I'll be doing my normal thing on fish logistics you guys can tune in there every hour on the hour mm -hmm. and we'll see you guys uh, see you guys Saturday yeah good time thanks guys